about uh, good BB tag characters to pick up if you're new to the game. And uh, at the end, we gave some suggestions of some teams that are really good to uh, really easy to pick up, scale well on the high level. Um, and one of my favorite is Yankatsuki. So yeah, Sonic Moon going on this team, uh, maybe potentially showing like uh, Raiju here, who seems to be a new player. Like, hey, if you want to play that Azrael Sus no Com, why not try Yankatsuki instead? <laughs> you know, maybe give them a little bit of a taste of what this team can take. Go on blockables, just the overall uh, sticky type of pressure, really hard to push block in terms of forward momentum on all of their uh, buttons and assists, you know? Yeah, it doesn't seem like it's going very well for them, though. They are just generally kind of struggling with the defense here. Getting command grabbed on the Oki here, thankfully going to be able to burst out, but I think they're going to get punished on the air dash. No, no punish on the on the super, though. Not going to be able to contest on the Utatsu either. Going to be able to bait out the DP and carry all the way to the corner, most likely. Ooh. Honestly, not the worst amount of damage in the world. Uh, of course, like, that wasn't uh, like optimized or damage, but for one bar, getting the 7.5k punish, that was neat. Unfortunately, it was the knockdown situation, right? Not finding anything hard or anything that was uh, going to allow for Raiju to really continue to pressure. So, reset back to neutral. Sonic was able to pretty much perfectly stabilize a hit away from being able to take this now, and there it is, 5 beat. Yeah, just didn't really establish themselves whenever they did get a chance to do so. But whatever hit they got, it didn't lead to anything too substantial. And Sony Kun was able to take advantage of that and start their own pressure, get things started. They didn't even do anything crazy either. They were just meeting. They were generally just forcing them to make a decision on offense, which is all you really need for a team like this. And until they ha they're able to show that they're able to deal with what Sony Kun is doing, then why why stop until now? Yeah, the fact of the matter is, if you're playing a team like Azro Susano or uh, two big bodies that like don't really have too much in the way of like zoning or mobility, um, especially these two, right? Azrael doesn't have a traditional run. Susano also doesn't technically have a traditional run. He has the accelerate run, um, where he's slow on start and he speeds up. Um, you have to be really confident in your neutral game. Um, and just kind of. I would say really confident with the game mechanics as a whole, so it's not to say that Raiju can't find success with this team, but they're gonna have to dictate a lot of the pace and do a ton of learning on the fly as well. Though it looks like they're off to a decent start, they've been getting a lot of stray hits, but nothing that's leading to anything substantial here. No punish on the burst either, just gonna be getting hit by the DP here. This Azrael really low. Gonna be able to catch out on the DP though, another same situation as they were before, carrying all the way to the corner, doing the combo that we're a little more familiar with. Oh! Well, what is... <laughs> Some type of unfortunate <laughs> drop there off, out in the open, and... Well, couldn't find attack up just no. Azra was obviously super low. Um, unfortunate situation to be in, but does find a 5 BB. Um... Oh, I was gonna say, maybe with some proper routing that could've killed, unfortunately. Could not find a way to get that jump cancel. At the base of resonance. This... Right, just not out of this. Just a couple of good hits could do it. Ah, uh, no, but yeah, just tried to DP out of the situation, maybe tried to get the Akatsuki off of them, and is going to potentially lose the character. I don't want to say anything just yet. Yeah, just going to DHC out here, keep it simple, and put two games on the board here against Kaiju here. Not looking very good. Yeah, uh, Raiju has at least um, gathered some intel in terms of how to play the ground game. Uh, so now the last layer that they're going to need to be able to unlock is um, figuring out the 2v2 game, right? In terms of like when they call assist, how to call assist, because they do actually have a pretty good assist kit in the form of Susano. Uh, 6p as like that little bullet assist uh, could come in very useful in terms of like getting more control of the ground game and then uh, locking down with 5p. Susano's 4p is okay. so. Um, that's probably their next level, um, in terms of uh, being able to overcome Sonic and being top tier. Yeah, no, and the way that Sonic is playing the neutral here is... Uh, like I mentioned earlier, name of the game, very simple. They're not doing anything that's requiring too much knowledge here. They're just throwing out projectiles and pressing buttons until they're able to get a solid hit, like they did just now. Carry all the way to the corner, just call the assist needy. But we're going to be able to bust out with the DP or recognize the situation, but one right back on the board here, not recognizing the whiff on the 5A, and is going to be able to call the assist here, but burst potentially on the table? Yeah, okay, but getting the assist back right as it happened, too. I thought they were still on the lockout due to the combo routing, but not the case this time. A little too much dip on their chip with the combo here, but the really weird situation there after teching out and just going to be getting hit for it. Probably not dead? Question mark? Yeah, not even bursting here. 
Yeah, Sonic is not he's utilizing two parts of double super news that it wouldn't kill. Oh, very sneaky uh command throw in the act switch. Oops, hello? <laughs> oh my god, the train! That was insane. Yeah, just gonna do the auto combo here to clutch it out and cleanly take the set 3 0. Now, we were commenting on like uh, what Kaiju could potentially be doing in the background there. This is definitely a situation of not being very comfortable within the systems of the game. A lot of air dashing at uh, spots where they could easily be entered, a lot of calling assists in awkward spots. I think that's just something that's going to be ironed out with time. And for what they did today, they were showing that they do have promise for later down the line. But for now, they're unfortunately going to be set down the losers with Sony Kun moving on to their next round. And we are going to be having the next match here between. Let's see. Drum roll, ba da da. Sprite and. Uh, I don't know if I should refer to them as Ami. Ami? An uh, Amster the Hamster? I'm, I'm not really sure what they're going by right now, but. Uh, they used to go by Kitan or. Amethyst. I, I think that's what they're going by now, yeah. Amethyst. And this is going to be a good one, actually, because uh, Emmy is very, very dedicated to the zoning game. I think they are probably the most trademark zoner player you will ever meet. P push blocking first hit basically 90% of the time. Setting up loopable situations that don't necessarily have crazy mix to them, but are going to really wear you down mentally and continuously apply pressure until you make a mistake. They really want to fuck with you mentally, and I think the teams that they play, more specifically the cake special that they're probably going to be bringing out, it's going to be rough for Sprite to overcome this, especially if he sticks to the Ragna. Yeah, we'll have to see how that works out. Sprite Cranberry obviously on the other end of the spectrum, uh, typically Ragna, Azrael type of play, very, very aggressive. Um, but in in their aggression, I want to say it is kind of like a controlled aggression to where um, they're able to slow down and make some really like great reads. Is <laughs> it, what I would say. It's like a, I've seen Sprite Cranberry capitalize on a ton of like happy birthday situations and um, just get some really good calls, uh, supers, and things of that sort. So uh, if uh, Amy is bringing the Rachel Batista to the table, you know, as you just noted going for a more zoning approach or zoning first type of style rather than uh, it kind of being dynamic in terms of like mixing up zoning and mix um could prove dangerous because uh, i mean at the end of the day i'm gonna i'm not gonna say like rachel batista's damage is terrible but if you're gonna be relying more on zoning all it could take is one mistake and then sprite cranberry is gonna be like 10k um however that could be exactly what you want that could be your comfort zone just making them work for their hits and uh believing in your game and your neutral at the end of the day so uh amy kind of taking us all for a spin though not gonna be doing rachel Batista. it's actually healed a rachel uh that they're gonna be utilizing and going up against uh sprite cranberry's adachi asriel so no back in sight okay yeah that that team pick makes a lot more sense the while adachi isn't much better than ragna he does at least have a neutral presence that hilda does absolutely have to respect and if he is able to assert himself in any capacity, then he's able to do a lot with that opening. Just like right now, he was able to potentially set up a BZO, was a little too far from it. But now that Azrael's on the screen, we're going to be able to set up some mix here. Oh wow, okay, tried to DP out, but it's going to get punished by the assist here. Going to potentially carry to the other side of the corner here, set up the Rachel zoning? Oh yeah, 4P coming up from uh, Ami. Not actually uh, in range, but just the, the sheer presence that that 4P holds. Just uh, respecting it no matter what. I mean, really kind of running away with the screen control game here at the moment. One good Larry up from the Dodge Fight Peak. Turn, uh, turn things around Hill. Into the corner we go. Yeah, like we were talking about earlier, this is probably the one kind of team that you can't really be as luxurious about how you go about using your defensive options. Because Hilda got touched once. This is the first time Hilda got hit. And she's yeah. already just below half health. And she's forced into a 50 50 situation. Was able to spend a lot of meter to get out of that. It wasn't able to get a kill off of it, but is going to be using their defensive tools to get out here, and wow, what a good super too. I did not think that was going to work, but I guess they were so high in the air they weren't able to recover from the button. So yeah. There was a good push block from Amy to get out of the cross combo situation, uh, so I do like that. Um, one thing I was going to note is that like the Hilda-Adachi matchup, um, Hilda actually has a lot of... Uh, 
opportunity to keep Adachi out or keep Adachi in check due to like the full screen V normals and such. He can't be as uh, you know loose with his Zeos as he typically could in other matchups. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how that uh, matchup develops. Probably around two. I think the Rachel held that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I think that spoke for itself the moment that super came out. Yeah. It's going to be volatile, to say the least, because it's... While I was talking about the pressure that a very zoning-heavy playstyle can insinuate, the threat of being able to get knocked down once and guess for game right after, or maybe even just die off that first knockdown, is also just as intimidating. You don't really want to be making mistakes. You don't want to put yourself in risky situations. So Ami has to be very cognizant of how Adachi wants to go about asserting their presence on the screen, or just how they want to call any assists, how they use their meter, all of that. And I think they're going to be very aware of that because they swap to a team they're most likely not only more known for, but also more comfortable with in the Hilda Yuki Oh man, this leaving these uh, small gaps for Bright Cranberry to capitalize on. The pressure is not as tight as it should be. And you can see Bright Cranberry is going to capitalize that for all that's worth. Getting the life lead, really having full control of this corner, but a very clutch JC plus 5P. Going to change the tide. Going to get some uh, scenic stacks. Uh-oh. Oh yeah, trying to get you out here. Probably didn't have to spend the mirror, but you know, just kept it simple to assure the kill here. And... This is still not out of the game. Adachi does have resonance on the board. Gonna be able to spend meter as he prefer. Wow, got hit by the Bezio. But didn't really capitalize off of it too much. Maybe he's too scared of a burst situation. But is gonna be not getting too much off of it. Maybe they wanted to get a few air stacks in there. But Sprite is trying to get out desperately. They are, they're push blocking, they're, they're not blocking low. They're doing whatever they want here. But thankfully they were able to get out of the situation and put this Yukiko on a single hit. Yeah, I got the ACO hit confirmed. Yeah, that resonance is going to be running out, gets clipped by that 2A, so... Uh, do you even survive this, bro, or is it over? Oh, maybe with another 5B Phoenix loop, it could have been over. Gets opened up by the 5BB on the block with the 2 3 6 c and he just needs one hit, and the JB will allow for it. Going to be tying it up 1-1. Yeah, there it is. Emmy, as I've noticed from watching them over the last few days, is very good about how they go, go about placing their... Uh, full screen projectiles. Mm -hmm. They they delay it occasionally whenever they think that someone is going to go for reversal, or they position themselves in a way that would leave them safe to anything, which is why sometimes they go up into the air to use JB, because it's also a rather awkward spot to anterior, especially if she has Yukiko 6B behind it. Yeah. Because you, yeah, Yukiko 6B, as we all know, not able to uh, be stand blocked, you have to crouch block it. So. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to deal with not only the blocks done, but the general vicinity of what's going on there, then you have to be aware of the spacings. And a non-mobile character like Azrael is going to have a hard time doing that. Uh, what we're not going to have a hard time doing though is appreciating Zate for with the big ass raid Bobele. Let's fucking go. Hey yo, what's good, Brazil? Alright. Dude, I'm glad you brought that up. My ass was not looking at chat. Shout out to Zate. Shout out to Brazil one time. Appreciate all of you. <laughs> yeah, they're the goats. We, we love Brazil out here. Almost as much as we love about a stop COVID for doing fucking JC assist. Jesus Christ. But oh shit, drop the combo. Didn't get the weak point on the two-way, so it was gonna be forced to burst out here. But getting baited and all the same, gonna be carrying all the way to the corner, and this is already looking way better for Annie. Yeah, yeah, just having a more control. That was a genius uh, JB in order to snipe out the Adachi in the back. Did JG, JBB, excuse me, in order to teleport to Azrael in the front. Annie just has full control now. Gonna be going for the cheeky resets. Oh, 2B maybe try to call out the up back, but uh, Scra Sprite Cranberry is basically in jail right now. Alright, yeah, getting put into the game winning situation. This is exactly where you wanna be if you're if you're Sprite, but did not deal with the burst properly. Gonna be getting caught by the 5B. Not much damage, but this is slowly chipping away at you as you play. Gonna have to deal with the BZO here. Uh, they are finessing right now. They're trying so hard to deal with push block, they do not want to get out at any cost. Yeah, gonna be so growling smart. out here, good stuff. Yeah, hit Yo, the assist. Okay. It's, it's so funny, because the way the Sprite Cranberry is moving, it, it seems like that they're like winning, but no, they're, they're fighting for the life, trying to make a comeback, but their movement and uh, mobility is admirable, however, the life bar says otherwise. 
as uh, Emmy's gonna be able to get uh, make it two one. Yeah, yeah, no. Like I was commenting on earlier, this is absolutely the kind of movement you need to be able to assert when you're playing against a team like this that covers so much of the screen with such basic movements. Mm -hmm. This is the kind of thing you need to be able to do, but unfortunately the health differences were so massive, for lack of a better term, that all of the effort made there ultimately just weared them down further, and they really have to think about how they're going to go about dealing with a life deficit in the future here. Yeah. I think... Oh, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, in my personal opinion, like, when you're going up against like a Hilda or like a Nine or any of those characters that can Get kind of contest ready. the Dachi in that full screen, um, it's hard. I was going to comment that I wouldn't be surprised if Sprite Cranberry was going to go for a team swap and pull out the Ragna, but it seems like they're committed to making this ideology work. It's just um, tough, and I don't know how much experience Sprite Cranberry has against this type of playstyle with a Dachi. You know? Yeah, absolutely. I think they made the right call with picking a Dachi here because that playing Ragna into zoners is really just not a fun matchup, but... It looks like if they are able to assert themselves, they are feeling a lot better about it. It's just a matter of keeping on to the player, and that's not something we can always do. Yo, the high-low? Oh, man. I, I have some questions about some of the things that uh, Sprite Cranberry... I still have questions about some of the things that Sprite Cranberry is doing within the situation. But, I mean, they've gotten multiple hits. But my thing is, like, they, some of the hits that they got definitely could have amplified a little bit more on the damage, because Ami didn't have any burst to threaten. It did lead in the Uki, but... I don't know. The life def the life lead could be a little bit more here if they uh, kind of cashed out. Because now, look at the situation that they're in. Uh, threatening to die with Azrael with nearly five bars just without a force to use push block. You gotta, you gotta spin the cash sometimes. I think they're gonna be rewarded for not being forced to here because they did have the meter to do so and now they're gonna be able to swap out the character and save the Azrael. They're not gonna be able to call them for a while, so this is essentially a one on one unless he really wants to get risky with things. But. Oh wow, he did call them. Yeah, yeah, they're gonna be going for the CC oh. here. Oh, did get the hit. Oh, didn't get the confirm that they wanted. Went for the Gustav and not just the confirm. Gonna swap the character maybe? And kill the character here. Yeah, nice recognition on the hit, but can't get the DHC, so this is still a one-touch situation. Gonna get have to get this Azrael out of here. Playing very safe. Mm, okay, yeah, 60. Ami navigating away, getting out of dodge. Finds a two A snap on Azrael out of nowhere. And uh just isolating this Adachi. Yeah, gonna be able to interrupt after the pin because Hilda does not have any cancel options after that. And I actually don't remember how minus she is after you block pin, but considering how slow her buttons are and the spacings at which they were sitting, I don't think it mattered that much. I'll have to look it up later just to make sure what the actual situation was, but overall, this was something that Emmy definitely should have been a little more cognizant of. This is the kind of thing that you need to be focusing on, especially with the frame data things. And I think that's also a good thing about the Azrael pick here, because Azrael is very good about these two characters in particular. Both of them have really slow buttons. So the mind games with Gustav is absolutely worth playing. But I don't think we're going to be getting a lot of that if we get situations like this. We're already at level 7 uh, fire level. Yeah, Emmy made a really uh, smart play of calling the Yukiko 6P, baiting out Growler, and then activating cross combo to leave Azrael vulnerable and getting the big punish. It was like a power play to not only bring Azrael way down, but also lift those Yukiko fire levels. And it was in the early game, so it just allowed for Ami to establish this uh, really massive life dude. Oh yeah, did not get the confirm that they wanted there, missed the JB on the Bezio setup, but did get a sizable amount of damage on this Yukiko here. Gonna be forcing her to play the mind games of the Gustav here. Getting set up into the sandwich, this could be guessed for character, guessed incorrectly, went for a really unfortunate situation, but didn't get the combo that they wanted here. Gonna have to be really careful about how they play this neutral. Yeah, just a whole bunch of well-placed uh, JBs, right? And that, that's a place that was held that can be risky. Uh-oh, <laughs> I almost spoke it into existence, because it's just like, although JB is very good at tracking, um, if it does whiff, you are uh, putting yourself in a very uh, terrible situation because of the whiff recovery. Um, so things can really go downhill from there. Um, fortunately for Ami, it wasn't too bad of a punish. However, the momentum is starting to cycle more in Sprite Cranberry's favor. Find some solid hits on this Hilda. We'll go to the Adopti Cross Slash. It's going to be a hit away from dying. Yeah, going to have to be threatening with an Azio here. Just force anything out. Yeah, going to burst, but losing the character for it. Tried to meet you with Yukiko. 
and giving her a lot of healing for it, given how long the, the super actually lasts. This is definitely a really bad situation to be in, even if we do have full, full resonance on board. Dude, yeah, running under, you see Emmy, it's just gonna take a nice slow, has so many win conditions stacked against the Sprite Card Barriers on the right, a fairly healthy Yukiko. Um, Hilda is still in play, the 2v2 game can still happen, and if all things go wrong, Yukiko level late on the uh, fire stack can activate resonance, and then, you know, Dark Phoenix rises, you know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, it definitely feels like that's the situation sometimes, but this is definitely doable. This is not oh. a terrible situation to be in, especially if we're going to be getting hits like that on the Yukiko. She basically cannot call the assist, but no, you're going to land here. Wow, okay. Really good call out once again, using the situation that they're in to use their resources properly. Nice block. What an Azio! Dude, Sprite Cranberry is locked in. Uh, Ami potentially just aligned for a little bit too many gaps and potentially playing a little bit too aggressive against such an isolated Adachi, leaving uh, some opportunities for Sprite Cranberry to capitalize. Oh, uh... just on the brink of death, run straight into one of those fans, and Ami will be able to take it um, in a very close matter. Uh, Sprite Cranberry was almost rallying that back with solo Adachi, but uh, Ami was able to finish the story. Yeah, when I think you mentioned a lot of win conditions that were here, and Yukiko and Resonance specifically is definitely something that you have to be not only scared of, but extremely patient with, especially if you don't have health to mess with. Because something I do tend to see a lot of people do, or at least try to do, is intentionally get hit by fans so that they don't have to like navigate the neutral in the air, and then air tech forward with the invulnerability so that they can force her to either trying to anti-air or do something to deal with them approaching in that particular way. Yeah. But you don't have the health to do that in that kind of situation. So getting hit by literally anything, any of those stray fans, any of those Miragi nines, anything is going to be detrimental to how the set goes. And I think they weren't able to slow it down as much as they wanted to. And as a result, lost the last game there. It, despite the advances that you were making. Absolutely good stuff to Sprite. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, it was a valiant effort. I respect them for staying committed to that Adachi Azrael. You know, in the uh, first sequences of games, I was uh, thinking that it might be a good idea to switch, but no, they definitely proved that um, they have something to offer with the team. Maybe some more Adachi routing is needed. I do. I did notice that they opted to end with 5C a lot and was only doing like 4.8K when in situations where they probably didn't need to like uh amy didn't have a burst to threaten or anything you could probably um extend the combo for a little bit longer and still find your heart knocked down at the end of the day but overall in terms of fundamentals and approach it was all there so good stuff for them yeah absolutely but just like the fundamental play we were seeing before throw that shit out the window because <laughs> <laughs> now we're what watching serene and sony once again and i'm not sure if they're gonna be going back to the gang akatsuki Probably not, but this kind of set is so funny to watch because it's really difficult to make any kind of claim about what either side actually needs to do in order to make any proper progress. It's just a crapshoot at all times. R Rachel sets stuff up on the screen to prevent Hart from going in. Wald throws out his big ass buttons to force her to spend resources. And Hart does her thing, but has big ass assist behind it. It's it's really not much more than that. But regardless of that, the only thing that I know is absolutely as solid as the the, the three commandments of shit that we have to go through as people: death, taxes, and the Macharino shill. Now, we don't unfortunately have a code for you to claim so you know red can't get mad at you and say that sienna won't give you food but we do have 20 dollars on the board and right now that's untalkable many you know you can, can always appreciate that but i think i could speak for all of us when i say that anything is appreciated towards the players that go out of the way to take their time and play some bb tag in this day and age it, it's late into the middle of 2024. I don't think many people would be considering BB Tag a particularly big thing, but we go out here and support it regardless. So even if you aren't able to, to donate, I do appreciate you taking the time to watch. And if you do, you're also the best. The, I'm sure the players would appreciate it too. 
Indeed, indeed. You said three things were guaranteed in life, death, taxes, and the match from Reno. Uh, although, we can't claim codes, claim your dependents on your uh, taxes, because tax day is in like 12 days. I just had to do mine the other day. I almost forgot. Uh, IRS was almost after me. That would have been the end of me. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm glad I was able to uh, get that done. Um, yeah, yeah, you're talking about, you, you know, there, there's not really good or not not too vast of analysis to be able to put on this matchup given how many times we see it and how it plays out. Um, the only thing I would add is that when it comes to Serene Smile and uh, sonic Hoon, if their words are anything to go by, is that they're not good at the game. That's all they say every <laughs> single week and every single bracket that I'm in, so I'm just going to speak it into existence. They're not good. They should never be the number one seed. Uh, I'm not saying that. They literally tell me themselves, despite having multiple online tournament wins, so I'm looking forward to seeing two bad players face off right now. God damn. <laughs> Bro, that's what they tell me every week, so I'm just gonna spit the truth. <laughs> Literally in every chat, cheap, don't seat me first, I'm bad. So, <laughs> I'm just I saying. Feel like, I feel like that's a way of getting out of harder matches, no? Like, that, I don't know. That, I, I don't know how to feel about that. I, I, you know what? No, no, um, no opinions. Opinions are not allowed, except when it's Usoro. Fuck that guy. But... <laughs> honestly, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and let the match play out because I really... <laughs> I, I want to almost give ourselves a rest for the match that we're about to watch because it's gonna be non-stop talking if we actually try and do our job. Yeah, I mean, I can't say first and foremost, Serene Spa has had a very threatening presence, nearly like cornering Sonic and you can see them trying to take to the skies in order to find some opportunity for escape the air wall command throw is able to slam her down just not quite the follow-up that Serene Smile needed in order to maintain the pressure yeah and because of that uh, the heart was able to reverse the situation and get even get the side swap intentionally ending the combo early so that they can get the sandwich here gonna be blocking out the reversal but the S4P actually fucked it up a little unfortunate situation gonna be able to go into the DP here once again to fuck over the heart Swapping out, yeah, not gonna be able to kill here. Clashing with the assist, and I think they actually clashed with both, but it worked out in their favor. This walled really putting it on work right now, which is usually the antithesis of how this goes, but you love to see it. We, we need to see more walled representation. Yeah, this is a really yeah. interesting flow of the matchup because usually Serene Smile's game plan is I'm gonna try to dictate the pace of the neutral as much as I can with Rachel. Cause shenanigans, but at the end of the day, wall stand is my meat shield. I don't care what happens to the wall. The, the way this match has been playing uh, due to Serene's instability and Sonic's approach is that Rachel's kind of became the meat shield. So um, this is kind of why this ends up this way. Try to play as much solo wall play as possible. Locked out to the corner, he does die, but the entire time, Rachel has not been called, so she's able to heal up quite a bit. Level 3 Resonance coming into play, and, uh, you know, if it's your first time seeing this character, uh, this is an even match. <laughs> she, she is not down, this is an even match. Yeah, there there are a lot of characters that tend to become boss characters when they get put into Resonance. Rachel's probably one of the top five in that situation. She... She makes other characters look completely obsolete when she plays the game, and I think the complete reversal of the situation is exactly how that comes off. Unfortunately, dropping the combo, but I, th I think the situation still speaks for itself. And this S is gonna have to do at least one good hit in order to kill the character here. Yeah, gonna be blocking the super. Not able to punish because not an easy situation to do that in, but you're gonna be going low here. <laughs> the net play classic. Serene taking game one. Super cheeky. Uh, yeah, not, um... Not comfortably. They definitely weren't able to take that game uncomfortably. There's a lot of uh, scrambling in play. Again, finding some hits, but not really able to stabilize in the way that they like, leaving Rachel vulnerable. She nearly died uh, off of that hard punch super um, assist punish from the uh, empty throw active switch that Serene did. But, um, you know, able to bring it together. And, uh, yeah. What can I say? Level 3 or level 4 resonance, Rachel, is uh, probably better than some teams. Like, if you're just playing a team and you're fighting Rachel X, any character, and you kill the character, but level 3 resonance Rachel comes in, that character might be better than your whole team full health, <laughs> depending on what team you're playing. That's a very accurate way of assessing that, yeah. Um, something that Serene did struggle with partially whenever they played before is that, like you said, they used Wald as a meat shield, they weren't very careful about how they used either character. 
but they, they've been a lot more conservative with both their healths, not intentionally calling them to get to that resonance point, which is oh so strong. They're attempting to play the 2v2 game, and I think that is bolstering their play a lot more than it might realize at first. Like, the game plan here with both characters on screen is objectively just as strong, if not more stable, than the 15 second resonance timer to become the boss character for a bit. It's a little better, I feel, and, and that kind of play is something that they can absolutely assert, especially since Hart is not a character that is able to navigate against Rachel particularly well, and all of this overwhelming block stun that they're being put in just slowly whittles them down. Yeah, just gonna be air blocking that DP, and that is gonna be a dead character. Even swapping to the Rachel. Yeah, Sonic is just like can't get a break, dude. Like, uh, Serena's just covering all the proper angles and yeah, just uh, kind of uh, desperately swinging. George was able to hook it up, just watch the hit swim for the punish as uh, Serena goes up two games. But um, yeah, the, the, the way in which Serena is approaching is that you can see that Sonic is desperately trying to create space and establish some momentum. Uh, there were two sequences where Sonic did super plus assist. It was one time with S point and one time with heart point, and neither of them really worked out. Uh, Serene was just able to either recognize that that was a situation to play or just happen to be safe um, for a call of that sort of magnitude. And so you think about that, that's four bars being spent for nothing. <laughs> you know, those could have been push blocks. Those could have been so many different things. So, yeah, it's going to be really up to Sonic to kind of figure out how to navigate around this. I, I believe it is going to be heart centric. Maybe find some better timing for some back home and such. Uh, but easier said than done as Serene Smiles seems to be on a roll at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. While we do give Hart a lot of shit for being the character that she is, she is very linear in how she goes about playing her neutral game plan. She doesn't have a lot of variations in what she does to, to do so. So if you are able to force her to play yours, then she doesn't really have a good way of going around that. And I think that's been very evident in the last couple of games that we've watched here. Whenever Sonicun does get a hit, it doesn't even lead to the situation that they were hoping for. So this is going to be a, a case of I need to put myself in a better position at all points on the screen. And I think they were trying to bait a DP there, but they were going to be able to do that as well and kill the walls here. But again, this is the resonance racial we were talking about. Just call the resonance here. I, I was hoping that they were going to force the Rachel into a little more block stone so that they would have to deal with less of the resonance time because there's a lot of meter on the board here. Oh, never mind. I guess we're just calling like four Georges here. And that's this is the preferable play. Fuck Tempest Dahlia. Yeah, we're, we're just going to be calling George. I, I'm honestly a bit confused by that uh, play because George, you know, provides for a lot of blocks. Then maybe if you're trying to force out the push blocks, that could be the play. But, you know, Sonic had a pretty like stable lead. I don't think that like having that much George blocks done was going to be anything that really forced the like panic attention out of them, right? Defensively. And, um,. I would take the chip from Tempest Dahlia over anything, put them in a one-hit scenario, like, I think that's a better investment meter, but that's just me. No, so yeah, absolutely. Me, I just did my taxes. You know, I'm not, I'm not a financially uh, sound person, it sounds like. I think the thing... Serene is not a logical person sometimes. If you've ever spoken to Serene, which I know you have, <laughs> they just like laughing. They, they like having fun. And I think that was one of those situations where they just thought it'd be funny to have four Georges on screen. And there's really not much more to it than that, but they had a few games to work with. They they could sandbag if they really wanted to. So hopefully they'll clean it up for this game and it looks like they're doing just that so far. But yeah, that was definitely a throw on the last one. Bruh. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I'm supposing they were hoping that that wall to be would travel a little bit further, or they were just really hard committed to catching the uh, up back. The Sonic Blue and holding strong on the ground gonna be rewarded with a massive punish on Rachel. Uh, Serene needs to be careful, leaving Rachel extremely vulnerable, and yeah, was able to read the telegraph first, but to be able to allow for that full charge punish. Uh, this is this game is looking as good as Sonic Blue. Uh, it's not completely over yet, but they're in a very advantageous position at the moment. I forgot you called that off count. It's cool. Oh yeah, I tried to be burst maybe, but that was a really interesting input to do so with. I don't think that's what they meant to do, but it worked out in Serene's favor, and now suddenly all the momentum that they were shifting before is back into theirs. They're playing neutral with a basically dead wall, but 
this is still doable. Oh yeah, they tried to contest there. No health to play with, and this is going to be up to the Solar Rachel once again. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, like, uh, there were some sequences where it looked like it would have been a good idea to tag in Rachel, but I noticed about, like, 25 seconds ago, uh, Serene was at... Uh, Serene was at two Resonance Diamonds. And so, like, what they wanted to do was kind of build up the Resonance Diamonds and be able to threaten that level four Resonance Rachel, but we didn't even get to see it. Uh, Sonic was able to find that hit, had the bar to spin, was able to make it a next touch kill situation. That next touch did indeed kill, and now we're tied up 2 2. Yeah, absolutely. I think the main differential between the first couple games and this, the next couple that we just witnessed, is that. Sony's not really letting the shit that Serene is doing get to his head. I know I've mentioned the mental a lot with the players that we watched so far, but I think with Serene in particular, it is really difficult to keep yourself intact with all of the things that are going on screen. You know, just tell yourself, wow, this is kind of bullshit. But keeping yourself in the game and able to look at it more practically definitely playing a big deal here and the neutral skips that we were talking about not really being that effective before is playing quite a bit more of the game here just forcing the rachel into their uh, ideal spot Swip flopping back to the heart here and get decent damage with that too yeah i really oh, yeah, love sonic's approach against that rachel you can tell that uh serene is kind of preemptively taking to the skies probably fucking sonic is insane but sonic did no such thing it's just a whole bunch of uh, punches S6P calls and keeping it insanely grounded, which allowed for them to uh, air to ground Serene relatively simply. And yeah, just due to this overwhelming presence, this all of a sudden um, aggression that they bring to the table has uh, really turned the tide. You know, Solar Rachel's coming in. This isn't the menace. She's been able to have some comebacks before, but this time it was level two resonance on deck. So that is uh, not as simple as the task as we previously seen here for Serene. Yeah, no, I think they were just looking for the blocks under the torch here to get to a safe resonance call here. Not really much meter to work with, and, and even so, they were <laughs> just plus frames. And I, I don't really understand why why she is plus in that particular spot, or why she went for that reset there. But a lot of chip on the board here, this is going to be a... Oh no, I think they wanted the air unblockable, and they were a little too low to the ground. Maybe actually the, uh, the hit stun from hitting the assist caused her to land before the DP hitbox unblockable the... At S, but regardless of how that happened, that was not a good spot to be in, and unfortunately, going to be losing the game. Reverse 3 0'd by Sony Kun, being knocked down to lose bracket. Impressive. Yeah, the way those first two games were going, Sonic Kun looked completely lost, but was really able to uh, come to their own and um, apply the pressure that they need to do in order to get that set overall. So, uh, solid job to Sonic Kun, you know? Uh, not, not bad for a bad player, you know? Allegedly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's why I didn't really want to make the comment earlier. Like, as someone who's played so consistently as Sony Kun, saying you're bad and asking for a lower seed just seems kind of weird, but I'm sure it's just a joke. Like, just trying to be funny, and it was kind of funny. I, I laughed a little, mentally. But the only thing I'm going to be laughing at right now is <laughs> Holy, this is this an, this an insane segue. Hold up. Hold up. Hey, hey, it's fair though. Fuck this guy. Plays top one team. Only thing I'm gonna be laughing at is you throw seven. <laughs> no, 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 that's not a seven. That's a seventy first. You gotta put respect on the first seventy you soros over there, because this one is a menace. So to society, everybody. to BB tag, everywhere. If, if, look, look, if it were up to me, I wouldn't respect any of them. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> everybody get your exclamation point, you Soros, in the chat. Uh, th this is your WNF Online Edition BB tag episode 13 champion of uh, 2024. Under um, questionable means, it may have been one of the most uh, controversial WNF sets ever witnessed. Uh, but yeah, we'll see if Yusro can defend their throne this week. Um, provide some clean gameplay. Um, you know, just fumble-proof uh, techniques. I'm, I'm here for it. Well, oh, even the last thing I would call this, because this is stuttering to hell in back. I know the, the guy pulled up the fucking land cable in the moment he saw 9 on the screen. <laughs> he did not Bro, he's from New it. York! Like, <laughs> don't get me started, bro. <laughs> Hey, look, look, there's some respectable New Yorkers out there. I, I would call Dante somewhat respectable. He, he's that guy. 
However, this this guy right here, he, he stole my color too. That's how you know he's a he's a fuck one. Fuck this guy. Actually. Actually wait, no, that's the wrong color. So you have shit taste and you picked Narukami? Alright, bro. I got nothing to say to you. A lot of uh, opportunities left on the table here for Ami. Unfortunately, not the capitalization is necessary. Uh, that with DP off of the distance, having the range of 9 and Hilda could not establish a super advantageous situation. You can see that Isra is going to be able to run away with the momentum, has uh, really, really done a damage on uh, Ami's life bars, and now it's just solo 9. However, this is a character I'm not going to say is as crazy as solo Rachel, but it's kind of like within those uh, echelons of comeback potential. You know, solo 9 can definitely win games. Um, unfortunately, this time around, we won't be able to see that. No no resonance activation, no escape, and uh, no happiness for the BB-Tag community as you throw 7 gets a win. Um, yeah, I can't, bro. I can't, bro. I can't. Bro. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't process what you said for a second there. Goddamn. But yeah, no. So while Rachel's a bit more on the ludicrous side when it comes to general comeback potential or just being able to play the game, Nine is a very safe character. You can't really contest her very well. But I don't think we're going to be seeing much more of that because we currently have the character I was just talking about prior to this on the screen. You know, we, we've had two Rachel players on screen and I think that's two more that I'm willing to talk about within a scene. So th this is the one time I'm going to bring Crazy Sora here. Yeah, kill the character please. But. I, I think that's going to be not as difficult to task because this is the kind of thing that just requires you to really understand how the players as a whole play into one another. And, and Ami is a, is a particular kind of player you just need to like think about. And I think it's, it's only going to be a matter of understanding the player matchup more than anything else here. And it looks like we might be able to do that if we're going to be not blocking these DPs. It, never mind, we are blocking DPs. <laughs> just, just on the other side of the screen. And I'm not really sure why they called the assist here. I guess they really wanted to set up on this side. Go for a reset? I'm not sure. It, they got counter hit somehow. They they tried to interrupt, I think, on that particular setup. Yeah, gonna have a little bit of assist to go with. Did I think they blocked cross up because they thought they were gonna be getting, you know, crossed up. But unfortunately, losing the Adachi here left to a solo Narcotti. And that character is also gone. Yeah, that, that is that is gonna do it. You sort of not get very many opportunities in order to play the game. Uh, kind of giving Narukami and Dachi a taste of their own medicine. You know, usually they are the comp that's going to hit you and just not allow for you to breathe. You can't push block, you can't reversal, you can't do anything. You're just gonna have to simply hold the mids for 180 seconds. But um, no, Ami was uh, really good about like uh, locking down Yushiro's tech options and finding some really uh, good reversals. I did see Yushiro try to go for a uh, active switch technique to bait out the Rachel soup, uh, the Rachel DP. Um, however, they just left the Dachi a little bit too close, so the technique did not end up working out at all. Um, but this time around, starting out with a happy birthday. This is one way to switch momentum in your favor. Oh yeah, tried to go for the MP low, but unfortunately did not get the hit that they wanted. Actually went for the follow-up despite the situation that they could have been in here. Didn't go for the combo because maybe they thought they were going to be dealing with the burst here, but didn't really matter because this um, Rachel really is just being forced into the corner here, mashing out with the 2B, going to be forcing out with the plus rooms here, just doing it again, walking up to try and block the DP, maybe tried to bait the uh, throw as well. Oh, went for the air-to-air -air with the Rachel too. N interesting choice of an uh, action with uh, Ami here, but uh, slowly evening out the health pools despite getting hit on this last one here. Oh wow, Man. bursting out at a really weird spot, and that's probably going to be the death of the character. Yeah, I was not expecting that burst at all. I, I don't think Rachel was dead. Um, maybe uh, they had a little bit of anxiety about Rachel dying, and they really do want to stick to the Rachel 1v2 factor, but... Um, I don't know. Hopefully it works out in their favor, because I, I don't think that was a call that needs to be made. Okay, uh, I was I was actually fine with that Dahlia, because generally there was no way of killing the Rachel despite having the reaction on board there. Narakami was going to be gone regardless, and they did not have to meet it with UADHC, so that was fine. I, I think they're not very aware of how much uh, wind meter they have, because they've been, they tried to do a couple uh, floats 
when they had nothing on the board. And that's kind of rare, because Rachel generates wind meter really fast. I'd go as far as to call it a cosmetic resource, but I think this is the one time I saw that it actually mattered in a game. Right, yeah, just uh, too much gas utilized trying to uh, drive around in the air, steer Get with ready. Rachel. So going to be slowing things down more with Yukiko. Going to be swapping to that Hilda Yukiko comp that we know Ami for. And uh, see if they can swing this around. You know, Yusro is up 2-1. Um, so it would be two games that M's gonna need if they want to stay within his runner side and uh, have a chance for his finals. Yeah, absolutely. And then I've, I've noticed that they swap teams a lot, regardless of whether or not they are winning or losing. Uh, maybe it's just the comfortability factor. I could definitely see that being the case. But this is probably what they're most known for. Being able to assert the UPL here, just having a very strong and solid uh, base level 1 game plan they could go about asserting. But if we're gonna get knockdowns like this, then it's not going to mean very much. Gonna oh my <laughs> god, we're all swapped out. That was ridiculous. Dead character okay. too. That literal four seconds of BB tag was some BB tag ass shenanigans. What the hell? I had to switch out of the mix up. It works due to the uh, collision box disappearing and then just dying to a level eight uh, Yukiko super. Like what? And getting unblockable right after. <laughs> Man. That was tragic. Holy shit. <laughs> if, if I were you, I'd just be holding my head right now. I'd just be like, how how did that happen? Why did that happen? You know, in one moment, I was threatening a mix-up. I was threatening pressure. And then another moment, Yukiko was in my face murdering me. Like, how, how do you, how do you uh, offensively plan for that interaction right there? It, knowing you, Soro, he doesn't. He he simply goes, Ugh, "Just so stupid," and moves <laughs> on to the next match. Insane use for impression. I mean, like, I guess one thing I could say is, but how how do you uh, merely have a gap with a dodge and coming off of that happen in the first place? But, you, know, I don't know. you know, fair point. Fair point. <laughs> that is, it's kind of hard to come by in a situation like this. Oh man, that's that's another one Bruh. of the things that I feel like you know, six is very good at, like. You can't DP if you're not able to hit the assist in the back. And if you do, you're putting yourself in a much worse situation than you would be otherwise, because now you're locked out of burst, and that's probably not where you want to be against a team like this. Yeah, see what I mean? Just calling the slow assist on both sides here, it's just very powerful. Yeah, interestingly, uh, Ami got that same routing previously, uh, or that they previously got with the active switch into Yukiko. Um, Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, I'm getting mixed by uh, things that are going on. Uh, they didn't opt for fire levels, they opted for like a 5c knockdown. Um, looks like it all has paid off somehow, some way. And uh, Yusuf will, will be going to lose bracket at the end of the day. There, there it is. I feel like joining the BC right now and bitching about it. <laughs> oh fuck, dude. I'm, I'm so glad that she <laughs> Gave us the call to say whatever we want because I have so many thoughts. <laughs> okay, but in all seriousness, not not shitting on him anymore. Um, I think that was just another one of those situations where if you're not really comfortable with both the player and the playset that Amy brings to the table, then it's gonna frustrate you more than anything else, and frustration almost always leads to more suboptimal plays. You mentioned how uh, Narukami Adachi probably isn't letting you out of blocks then at any point, and I think the only reason that that ever really occurred is because USRO was frustrated, he just wanted to get in fucking kill him. And I can't blame him, it, it's, it's hard to not be angry at that kind of thing, and I think that really separates some players from others if they're able to keep themselves intact there. But still in the bracket, gonna be keeping themselves into the loser's quarters while uh, Emmy moves on to winners, like you said, and we're gonna be going on to our next loser's match between Sprite and Bumba. I'm glad we actually got Bumba back on stream here, because he did unfortunately get hoed earlier. Yeah, so it'll be uh, good to get some representation from Bumba here. Labrys Jin gonna be going up against Sprite Cranberry, who uh, does not have that Adachi Azra locked in. That's what we saw the pick last time they're on stream. Looks like they've uh, turned um, 
back to their Ragna Azrael ways. Yeah, yeah, that seems like the case. I think they only really stuck with the Yodachi last time solely for matchup purposes. The, the Ragna is just the character that they're most comfortable with, as far as I can tell. Or, I don't know if I'd give that to the Ragna or the Azrael, because they do play both those characters quite a bit, but this is the team that they're known for. This is absolutely their, their comfort pick, the thing that they'll bring to pretty much anything that does not absolutely just delete your character. And I think this is exactly what I'm saying. They really tried to throw bait there, and because they did it a little too late, they got thrown. This is a grand blue ass situation. God damn it. Man, I, I have been there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it looks like they are able to stabilize. Getting some very good reads on the up back of um, eccentric active switch combo. I was not expecting that. Yeah, and, and, uh, apart from just the characters they play, something Sprite likes doing a lot is suboptimal combos. They they do a lot of things that they most likely probably just think look cool, and it, I mean it works out. It still gets the same idea out of them, and wow. <laughs> Yeah, uh, the Sprite's been on fire with baiting the reverse without a Bumba. We do know that Bumba can uh, tend to be very reversal happy. Um, and th that's just a product of Bumba uh, really wanting to not be under pressure, right? Not not be under pressure, really have the uh, room to roam and uh, find a way in and, you know, play around their comfort zone within a neutral game. And so it it's understandable. Like, who, who realistically wants to be in pressure, right? But that uh, tendency to want to immediately get out and relying on those reversal actions as a means of escape, and not to mention relying on the reversal actions in the uh, form of Labrys, who does not have an amazing um, DP within her kit, it can uh, cause you some troubles, you know, if it's telegraphed. Yeah, one of the few DPs that you could actually react to hitting almost as much as we're going to be reacting to this kind of hit with a little bit of contempt, but the DP coming in clutch here in one of those situations where they can't cancel, going to be air to airing both characters and getting a nice happy birthday for it. Maybe going to be catching up. Yeah, going to be going so, through the dude. whole thing. Too. Yeah, Resonance, you have Red Axe, like there's really no reason why you shouldn't catch out here. Yeah, fair point, fair point. Uh, you are back in Grey Axe here and you are minus on hit after that, but I don't think you really- Oh no, they tried to channel back into the 5B after already using it for that combo. But, oh wow, still works in their favor here. <laughs> the momentum is crazy in their favor, but then again, this is Ragna, and Ragna inside Resonance is the character of all time. One hit using his drive and you will probably lose like half your health. Oh, interesting uh, choice of routing there to just keep it very simple. Oh yeah, waiting for the meter to come back. Dead character? Yeah, dead character. Oh no, not a dead character. A good amount of lifetime for Ragna though. Yeah, I think Sprite uh, conscientiously on that first hit did not want to do the uh, 2 on 4 c death side. Oh my god, just... The Sprite Cranberry is so heavily in the head of Bumba Chunga. They're just running up and waiting there in order to be out of reversal. They're not even like threatening anything. Um, just really has a massive read on the situation at hand, but yeah, Sprite was uh, absolutely within that resonance call, kind of trying to uh, prioritize life region and it ended up working out. Ragna came in here with maybe like 3k health, gonna be winning the game with about like 10k, and uh, pushed Sprite's primary even further ahead within this match. Yeah. Yeah, they were able to recognize the situation they were in, tell themselves, okay, I need to chill out a little bit and just play to their pace. And ultimately it worked out. They were able to sniff out a lot of the defensive habits that they do tend to go for, like they did in the first game, except they did it with a little more uh, finesse this time. A little bit of a weird route, uh, choice considering the routing that they chose, but ultimately worked out in their favor. Didn't really have the resources to mess with here. Ooh, confirming despite the as weird assist hit glitch going on there. Gonna be able to confirm into a full knockdown. Not gonna be dealing with reversal in any way, but getting thrown on wake up. This really is fucking grand blue. Yeah, Sprite was... is doing a lot of like run up nothing. And so, like, Bumba, I guess, has caught on to that, and is like, okay, if you're just gonna run up in my face trying to beat my reversal, I'm just gonna throw your ass. And, like, honestly, fair. <laughs> like... <laughs> yeah. Well, almost as fair as being able to block that 5C from uh, Sprite there. Gonna be able to 
burst out here and probably put themselves in a worse situation. If they did not drop the combo, nice block here. Tried to DP out, but just did not block the Gauntlet Hades. Best move in the game. Dead character, most likely. Yep, gonna be able to do DBD, get Ragnar to full health, straight into the Blackhawk Stinger. And now, Solo Gen, level 2 resonance. Oh, oh, that was uh, quite the um, quite the power move. Power statement. Ooh. Yeah, getting the nice extension there. Jin probably one of the few characters that are able to combo into resonance like that and still be able to get some sort of Oki out of it. And Jin not a very crazy character on their own, but is someone that's able to take advantage of the meter situation. Not gonna be able to- Okay, no, they were able to punish here. Gonna be getting a nice little extension in the corner here, but no, didn't pick up the way that they wanted to, and getting caught by that, but no, the character-specific hit on the 214C. Just getting grabbed right after, though. And... Can I close my mouth for now? Yeah, dead character. That's gonna be on the Chunga. Getting knocked out of bracket 3-0. That's so unfortunate, dude. That EX Ice Car was so perfectly timed in order to uh, snipe out Asriel and just like go under the Ragna 6P Blood Slice. Like that, that looked like something scripted out of a combo video. Um, and Bumba was almost able to uh, cash that in all the way to the end. You know, it, it's um a little bit of a hard thing to say because like they, they got that hit right when uh, uh they got that hit right when they were heading out of residence, right? And so they could have killed the Azrael if they did an air super. Um, but they decided against it and instead opted to keep it burst safe. Um, and I don't know, it, it's hard to say if it would have been worth killing Azrael at the end of the day, Ragnar was still going to come up with a ton of health. And um, they were able to get the punish on Ragnar and at least had Ragnar under pressure. If they got a hit on Ragnar, they could have potentially killed Ragnar and brought in Azrael with even less health. So, you know, good, good on them for making it close. Um, but it was a uh, Sprite Cranberry that walked out and... Looked good with that Ragnar and Azrael. They were just so deep within Bumba's head defensively. I just don't feel like Bumba had an opportunity to really express himself in the 2v2 game. Yeah, absolutely. I think Sprite, out of all of the... Uh, I want to call them newer generation because they, they joined within the last year or so of BB Tag. And I think he was probably the one that stands out to me. It, just as a player preference thing because he... While I'm not a bit huge fan of like how he routes things sometimes, the way he plays is very solid. He he just goes in and works around your habits and makes that his entire thing. Mm -hmm. He he has a solid way of forcing you to do so and goes about that in a way that forces you to flinch. In, in a different way than how maybe Ami would do it. They're not making you tired or intimidating you in that way. They're just making you feel as if the situation is perilous and especially with the damage that both these characters can provide was able to do exactly that but almost as perilous as getting hit by Azrael 5b after get blocking a burst is having to deal with teddy and and the 71st usoro is gonna have to go ahead and do that here in this next set Yes, we do have the one and only mustache villain coming up. If you are uh, new to BB Tag, maybe tuning in to BB Tag for the first time, uh, this is quite the time to tune in. This is a one of kind player uh, in terms of Taker Teddy. Probably nobody else that plays this team. And if they do, I would uh, bet my lifetime savings they're not as optimized and well studied as mustache villain. It's really a labor of love and why BB Tag is so awesome seeing mustache villain cook and what they come up with and just um, their overall uh, approach to this team. It's uh, really kind of defining why this game is so great. Yeah, 2000%. This is indeed a 2v2 game and they really show the essence of using both characters to their fullest extent. This is the kind of player that you look up to and just enjoy watching because they're so fun with it. But. This isn't a time for fun. This is a time for optimal gameplay. And ideally, we're going to be seeing both of that from both these players here. Going to be getting a nice knockdown with the Teddy here, utilizing the items to their fullest extent, and getting a full combo timer here. Maybe wasn't as confident in the uh, 10 second timer there as they would have liked to be, but going to be able to set up the sandwich here. Was not blocking and getting a. Oh, oh no, a weird situational pickup, but didn't get punished through the DP. Good, I guess? That was really weird. What? Oh my god. The, come on. Really? What the fuck, man? You know what? This might, this might be like 
the Wayans brothers or like Cheech and Chong. This is like peak comedy, dude. You have Yusuro's chaos and Mustache Villain's calculations allowing for the perfect combination of BB tag. That was like the craziest way to kill a character ever. Yeah, punished by Sparkle on the DP. The bomb explodes, combo into the poison curry for the kill. Somebody needs to clip that. Like, what the hell just happened? <laughs> And then Yusuo is like, all right, bro, get me out of here. I'm, I'm about to, he's about to put the battery in my back, bro. He's about to put the battery in my back. I'm not going to lie. I'm getting charged up over here. That, that is one hell of a way to put it. Throw baby the grappler. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, okay, they're dead. They're dead. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, I lied. I lied. Now? Oh, no, they might actually not have the meter to kill here. Ooh. Yeah, no, especially if you're going to be dropping the combo like that. This is going to be, uh, guess for game character? Yeah, just going to be doing the 720. I really hope it was the 720. And killing off the Adachi here, just, just capping off the madness with a little bit more clean play. There it is. Uh, you know, no matter what month, day, or year that I'm watching Mustache Villain, they uh, never cease to amaze me some of the things that they're able to pull off. That punish, that DP punish combo was actually freaking insane. Like, wow. Yeah, I think needless to say, Yusoro is going to have to close Twitter for a bit because he's going to be clipped with like a couple hundred likes on that tweet. It's going to be one of those things that people comment on BB tag for for a, a couple minutes now. But just worthy as commenting on is getting it hit like that. Wasn't able to capitalize off of it due to maybe the spacing of it, but controlling the pace a little bit better now. I mean, maybe getting hit by that last hit of the, the auto combo, but able to really enforce themselves as a player here. Oh, yeah, getting off the barrel, just gonna be crossed up, not getting the full combo that they wanted, blocking out. Oh, worried about the time bomb too. So many little things on the screen. This is basically the same as playing against Faust. Nice push block on the bear screw, recognizing the matchup awareness to be able to do exactly that. Getting bursted out, but uh, not a bad. Oh wow, okay. A lot of drops from uh, Mustache going on here. Oh my God, the 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 footies question mark. <laughs> Take your ass, bro. Yo. Okay, restand. Yeah, smart, smartly, wisely. Just, uh, just uh, push blocking away, going into safer distances away from Tager, that is. Tager doesn't have any bars, so can't even do any spark pulse or anything. And just trying to uh, catch this in for as much as it's worth in the pressure department. Mustache will in trouble. Oh, yeah, keeping it as burst safe as possible there. Gonna be keeping it, uh, I don't want to say even, but this is definitely not a bad situation for a uh, mustache villain to be in. Ooh. DP? Oh no, that was a weird spot to be in. I'm just glad they didn't get counter hit, but getting crossed up into the, the really bad food, leading to the hit that they needed, Cro crossed up again! They're dead. That's, it's over. <laughs> How does he do it, man? How does he do it? You get it twice in one set. I think anyone that was a doubter before just just has to come around at this point. I, I think even someone is... Oh, go ahead. Oh, I just said he's the GOAT. <laughs> he, he is indeed the GOAT. And it, it's a shame that we haven't seen him for a while because I think because of that bit of a gap in between when he played last and now, we're even more flabbergasted than what we were before. It's... Always a treat watching Mustache Villain, but Yusoro is has a little bit on their plate here because they it's all it's hard to know everything about the Teddy matchup. They, they've shown they have very good awareness of the matchup as is right now, but with the hits that they're getting, doing such low amounts of damage, it's kind of hard to really go any further than that. They even tried to bait the burst there, but. The 2v just not having the head involved they need for that. Gonna be able to burst out, try and maintain some offensive presence, but the JB reaching a little too far back. Push blocking once again on the bear screw. Not gonna get too big of a hit here, but forcing the bear screw to block. Yeah, not a dead character, but bursting out a little too late. Did not have the resources for it until then. This is looking like a very clean sweep so far. 
Yeah, this is a lot more of uh, the typical Narukami Adachi gameplay that you would expect where, you, you know, they just kind of find one initial hit, or it doesn't even need to be a hit. You just block something, and then you're just uh, fumbling trying to find an opportunity to play the game as they just uh, completely lock you down, leaving no opportunity for escape. Uh, but we play much is finally finding something, a little bit of a gap within the pressure that for you, so going to allow for the tier to try to just swing this back. Yeah, just utilizing the armor on the normals of the Taker here. Not able to do too much more than that. Oh, oh wow, my god, that was such a smart sledge, dude. Yeah, that wasn't that they needed. Going for the mid-screen Taker Oki rare. Uh, dropping the combo on the burst here, but nope, just getting a throw right after. Happy little accident. Gonna be able to cross raid here. Yeah, that's a death character. That's gonna do yeah. it. Just man, it's sledging within the uh, opportunities of peril, not caring about BZO, not caring about Narakami, and not caring that you won WDF last week. Mustache villain, gonna be able to take out Yusuo, the 71st one, 3 0, and is a uh, tragic along within this loser bracket. Yeah, he's going to be able to move themselves into the loser's semis here and cement themselves within the top five placers of the, the game so far. Fantastic stuff to MV and Yusoro as well. As much as we were shitting on him, it, it, it was mainly just a joke. He is absolutely probably one of NA's best and he always shows up, always does fantastic. And I think tonight was absolutely the display of that. Despite how the set may have went, it is something that should be persevered throughout. Fantastic stuff to you, Soro. And while he's able to look at the games that he had to go through just now and maybe try taking a little bit from it so that he could he won't be put in a similar situation next time, we're gonna be moving on to the next match between Serene and Sprite. How are you feeling about this one? I'm so sorry, I just stuffed my mouth full of jerky. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be a good match. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it's definitely going to be a good match. Like we were commenting on the uh, Sony Kun versus Serene match earlier, I think this one's going to be a little more grounded. I'm not sure if Sprite is going to feel comfortable going with the Ragna into this one. I've definitely seen them do it before, but I think this one will be a little more uh, grounded. And Serene will always be doing their thing, you know, the Scramble King, but Sprite brings a, a level to things that makes uh, makes things just make a little more sense, I suppose is the best way to put it. Sprite is the kind of player that if you were to place them into a perilous situation, they, they're able to keep their head intact. And I think that is absolutely probably one of their best traits as a player. And as they go into this next match with a player that is really good at exploiting that kind of thing, it's going to be putting them to the test, especially if they put themselves into a matchup like Rachel versus Ragna. I think that's one of Ragna's very few 7-3s, right? Or is that only 9? I, I can't remember. I'm not going to speak on Ragna matchups at the Southern California uh, uh, player. <laughs> I have like 5 people that will correct me if I'm wrong, so I'm, I'm not saying anything. <laughs> hey, you, you just did your taxes, so you're basically invincible. Uh, there's, there, that's one way to look at it, potentially. I mean, I can't, it, no matter what the numbers are, and Get what do the numbers ready. mean, Mason, right? Um, I can't imagine it's fun, you know? So, it looks like they are going to be uh, stick with Ragna Azrael. There is no Adachi in sight as they uh, go along this wall star rate chart. I really love the analysis that you put out in terms of, like, player um, tendencies and mindset. Uh, cause yeah, having the, uh, consciousness to shrug it off and just say, yeah, that's DB tag, what are you gonna do? It's like, I think kind of necessary in order to navigate around some of the, uh, chaos that can do and three smiles in embodiment of chaos, so. <laughs> that is a good way of putting it, because reacting to shit like that, what the hell, bro? That was such a good play. And using the assist to utilize the defensive tools of the Osriel here. Not able to kill the character, but a fantastic choice of sequencing. Man. I gotta give him props for that one. That was good. Not gonna be able to utilize the George the way that they want to. And the Sprite is definitely not out of this. This is Ragna and Resonance. So Yeah, unfortunately it's just level 2 Resonance. So I don't even know if he can build the bar and get super here. Unfortunately, no. Finds the Gauntlet Hades, the life is still getting regained. Massive shimmy, homie looking like a Street Fighter play with that one. 
Yeah, bro has been hooking up the, the central friction every now and again. He, he knows his OSs, he knows his movement tech. But what he doesn't know is that Serena's hidden. He's <laughs> gonna be able to press the 5B to kill the character and make all of the healing that just ensued moot. Ragna may be able to heal his health, but he is still indeed one of the lowest health characters in the game. I believe he is a 1600 character still? 1700? Ragna, I'm pretty sure. You know what? I'm not even gonna comment on that, bro. I'm gonna have like five Ragna players in my DMs if I'm wrong, so I'm gonna just let you cook, honestly. <laughs> hold on, hold on. I, I, we got our good old trusty Dust Loop. Okay, yeah, he's he's actually average health, so I can't I can't say anything about he's that. The, the, yeah, 17k. Okay, I thought he was 17. I just I refuse I refuse to say it. You gotta have more confidence in yourself. Just like Sprite has the confidence to confirm in that five because Jesus Christ. Gonna be able to get out the burst here. A lot of preemptive bursts from Sprite within the last couple of games recently, and I think all of them have ultimately led to a weird hit. Maybe not leading to the most damage, but into a situation that he's not as comfortable in. What do you do? He he consciously wanted to dash into George just to growl it because he thought it would be funny. And decision making like that is not something that I can criticize. I just gotta laugh alongside you. It's just like we're about to laugh about Ragna Air DP being exactly what it is. Gonna be able to swap out into the Rachel here and... Oh wow, okay, going back white into the walls. It, they are playing a little more careful with their characters, but it's definitely not anything crazy here. Because this is definitely a one-touch situation for the wall, especially if they get dashed here. No meter, getting put into a... Uh, oh, oh, okay, they actually, they actually got the DP there. A, that was a really perilous situation to be DP in, and, and I I don't think you were ready for that. Oh so man! Dropping the combo Why? once again, though. Yeah, that was an unfortunate drop. Definitely gonna kill with pretty much anything at that point. Oh, the awareness to know that the uh, low body is gonna hit right after the six B here. That was crazy. Almost as crazy as this confirm. Unfortunately, dropped it, but swapping to the healthier character and gonna be dropping a lot of resources onto the floor here. No wind gauge to talk of though. Yeah, I'm gonna be swapping to the wall here. Man, yeah, just, oh man, oh man. I'm, I'm almost willing to say, uh, cause I mean, this is just a really tough situation for Sprite Cranberry to win at this point, right? Like, um, there's so much ground that you have to make up, you gotta take down the wall, um, and then you gotta deal with some, uh, Rachel. I almost feel like Serene tagged in walled purposely to have him die so he could bring in Rachel, but that's just me. But um, anyways, if you're Sprite, I'm almost wondering if you're thinking about bringing in the Yadachi for game three, because this is two consecutive oh, games where you okay. haven't really been able to do much of anything. I, I was like genuinely confident he was going to block all of that for a second, but okay, going to be getting hit by the JB there. Almost looking really not as good as you might think here, because while Rachel does have the comeback factor on the resonance that we've been praising so far, you don't really want to do that in Azrael. He can't... He makes good use of that, because you can't really interact with him while he's doing Growler. And Growler is frame 1 projectile invul, so there's no reaction time necessary. You just wait for something to hit you. You hold the Gustav. You take no chip damage. You wait out the resonance. I don't think that is going to be as advantageous as it may seem on paper. So... That was definitely why I didn't see uh, Serene immediately go into Resonance. Maybe they wanted to use it more as a defensive tool rather than an offensive one. But ultimately didn't really matter because Rachel is Rachel and she has a 13 frame overhead that she can do four times in a row. Epic. Love to see it. Fair and balanced. Ooh, man. Yeah, I think that freeze frame Serene was able to react accordingly with the reversal action. Straight to the sandwich situation, bringing the dragon well below half health now thanks to this happy birthday and this is what i'm talking about like a lot of these games have had a similar cadence and the serene smile is kind of running away with it like sprite just can't figure out the 2v2 game man he can't catch a break yeah just trying to backdash using the invul but that, with how active rachel 5p can be it's so difficult to do that with oh yeah tried to super there just got throw instead it was a little bit of an input was a little bit off on the spacing on the george <laughs> <laughs> Damn, that was unfortunate. Bro thought the George was dead, or maybe that the Gustav would have killed the George? 
George is so weird. Sometimes the health is like really inconsistent, so you don't feel as confident as you really <laughs> are. Like, that was so fucked. You're not winning in that situation. There's there's no conceivable way you're taking that game. Wow. Hilarious ending. Just plays three Georges, do this huge walled body splash, cross up, and then uh, run for Rachel. Like, what? What do? You, what do? You, what do you? Yeah, just as you said, what do you realistically want to do about it? Hilarious. I think if that's the way you get knocked out of bracket, you are like just defeated. It's so, it's so tragic that that's the kind of thing that would knock you out there. Just a checkmate situation in every sense of the word. Bro got knocked out of existence. That. <laughs> I think this was one of the matchups where Adachi probably would have been a little better. Ragna with no meter, other side of the screen, walled on top of you with three Georges. Yeah, I don't know. It's I, I want to give more of a practical critique there, but I think that was just a situation where you have to... You've you got a gap, and gapping in a game like BB Tag, especially with the character on the screen, not the easiest thing to do. But... What would be even easier than that is transitioning to our winner's finals here between Ami and Sony Kun. Yeah, definitely. Uh, top four is solidified with Ameth uh, Amethyst Gray and Sony Kun going to be uh, heading us off with our winner's finals. Mustache Villain and Stream Smile within our loser semis, which, uh, in my opinion, creates a very um, vast and interesting top four. Like, this is a very uh, distinguished and specific set of players that we have here that are kind of all character specialists, I feel, or at least team specialists, um, where you have uh, Ami having some Yukiko uh, specialist tendencies in the background. Of course, Sonic Kun's team is completely unique with, uh, within this hard S approach. Uh, we saw what Mustache Villain brought to the table with that Taker Teddy, again, probably one of the only people who want to play that team. And then Serene Smile with the Walled Rachel, respectively, very similar uh, type of uh, approach to Mustache Villain. We're probably one of the only people who want to play that team. So. Um, this is um, a top four that, again, as I said, represents why this game is so cool. You see all these, um, you, you do see the things that kind of dominate and are proven successful and are consistent in terms of like, um, you know, the the, 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 the meta-defining character. We're talking about the Yumis, the Adachis, and even like the Hildas and everything to an extent, depending on where you're at. But um, every now and then, and again, with some effort, you do get people that I kind of, do the work, do the science, and bring to the table some interesting stuff. And I feel like all four of these players are capable of doing so. I'm looking forward to this top four and seeing how it unfolds. Yeah, yeah, this top four is going to be one hell of a bracket to watch here. But almost as much as I like watching, I like getting paid. And I, I really think that the players that are taking the time to do so are going to be wanting just that with the match arena that they are playing in. And I don't actually have an open right now, so if you want to check the Macharino, you're gonna have to go ahead and type in the exact code I'm gonna be doing right now, exclamation point Macharino, and you will gain access to a wonderful code that will show you the prize pool for our players today. We don't have any codes, unfortunately, but we do have a sizable prize pool. You know, we, we went from a uh, we went from fast food money to 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 pay your parents back for taking you out to dinner money, and you know it's better than nothing. You, you gotta you gotta be happy about that whenever it comes up. And hey, bro, twenty five dollars for a BB tag bracket pot is not it's not bad. Oh no, it's, it's it's fucking huge in all. comparison. <laughs> and I'm just trying to make funny jokes out of it, but. Regardless of that, if you do feel as if you're able to spare a few cents of change to support the players that take the time out of their day to do so, which I believe we just did because our current commentator on the side just doubled the prize pool to $50. Shoutouts to Kraken Atkins. He just did his taxes, so you know he's good with money. And oh. <laughs> um. <laughs> he's using that refund to, to really help out the... The, the lowly BB tag players out and here. What has been a couple of recent recent purchases <laughs> you've made? Hmm, enlighten us. Uh, I'm, I'm, I. This is not gonna become my uh, a, the crack and act is accounting stream. I, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not answering any questions. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> Regardless, the Matcherino is available. If you're able to donate, please do so. But if you're not, then that's perfectly okay. Just your attendance in the seat itself is all we can really ask for. Just like we could ask for maybe a normal match between these two. You know, call me fucking... What's his name from the, the Magic School Bus? That, that kid with the orange hair? I don't even know. But... I haven't seen that show in like two decades, dog. I ain't got it. <laughs> I'm just thinking of the specific scene there, but even still, going on a crazy ass Magic School Bus ride, gonna <laughs> gonna go into the the winners finals here. Two very foil players with one another, and and what what I mean by foil is that two players that are the antithesis of one another. Sony wants to be in your face at all times because that's where the character thrives. Whereas this kind of team on Ami's side is comfortable pretty much anywhere except exactly where sony Kun wants to be so i know this matchup despite what i just said it's still really bad for hilda because she doesn't really have a lot of ways to cover every single angle so she has to force heart to the ground a lot more than she would like unfortunately gonna be dropping the big confirm that would have gotten her the hit that she needed but Gonna be setting up the Lobelias here and back homing out into the hit. This is gonna be exactly what she needs. Carries her to the corner. Oh my god. Oh, my oh god. you're so. I'm so sorry. I would be that screaming at my crazy. monitor if that was me, dude. There's no way. Imagine being punished for being right. Yeah, gonna be using the setup right there to deal with push block, but. Unfortunately, we're going to be getting hit on the burst. You're going to be cashing out with the uh, cancels in the homing as well. Get a little nice 8k here. Going to be going for the delay overhead and force a high-low mix-up. Didn't go for the homing cancel to deal with the burst there. Maybe just didn't react in time. Going to be going for the air-to-air. -air. The instant homing not doing particularly much. Just getting a lot of air-to-airs. Not killing the character that needed to be. Swapping out to the Rachel here and setting up a little bit of the Lobelias. Just controlling the pace of the match. Guys, I, I do like the way that Emmy uh, will fly up and call Hilda assist to force a sandwich. Um, it is a very practical take to the team if you're going to be utilizing Rich's ability in that way and overall Hilda screen control to try to force those situations. The thing that does give me a little bit of anxiety is like, potentially it could be too aggressive and too telegraphed of an approach, right? Uh, I think uh, slowly picking down and getting some Lobelias on the screen and uh, kind of mixing that up can uh, provide a little bit more layers to game plan, but the, the core that's in play, I understand what it's going to show. Yeah, absolutely, and once they were able to get that hit that forced both Hilda and Rachel to lock down, it was a lot more simple for both of them to go from there. Sony able to continue the pressure, and while they did have to spend a lot of resources to do so, resources well spent. Gonna be making every single hit count as much as they can, and straying away from the neutral situations that would cause them to get into scrambles. While Heart is okay at scrambles, I don't think that's the kind of situation you want to be in against characters that control the neutral so well. And I think that Ami agrees because we're going to be swapping off of the Rachel and off onto the Yukiko. Honestly, I'm just surprised they don't start with the Yukiko at this point. I think they've done this every set. Yeah, I mean, if I'm not mistaken, uh, they're trying to get more Rachel today, so... Um, but not not so much so that they're willing to bet their tournament life on Rachel, so... I don't know. <laughs> Which is definitely fair. You can't really fault them for that. that that's absolutely amicable to do. It, no pun intended, but... <laughs> God damn it. But... This is not as bad as it looks. They're gonna be able to let the youth go heal a little bit. No uh, stacks on the board here, so this is not as close as it wants to be. A lot of backhoming going on here. Not gonna be able to punish, but picking up on the assist, waiting for the burst. And, oh, waiting for the DP too. Nice punish, gonna be able to carry all the way to the corner, most likely? Nah, just going for the healing. Uh, not quite going on. It did uh, opt to call you people for P for a little bit of a lot of life regen. I do like that. Uh, really having solid control of the macro game in terms of life lead. And now you see some of those Pico 6 P's coming out. Remember, built some Phoenix stacks. Uh, Amy's just trying to be uh, in control of the long game here, right? As the time whittles away. Not super uh, concerned with the objective of killing characters. It's concerned with the objective of stacking the odds against you. I think that was the worst switch you could have possibly done. 
<laughs> yeah, that was, that was pretty bad. <laughs> Oh man, I really hope they just wanted a DP because that I, I that's definitely happened to me before. I felt that, but oh man, that's that that can't be a good feeling. Oh, especially good when you're with DP in the air. Come on, I know that's not intentional, but oh man, you're just gonna be able to burn out the resonance here. This being a non-factor at this point, are you able to cash out the super? Yeah, just gonna be wasting. Oh, oh, okay. dude, I hit. think she was punishable. Yeah, I think uh, S assist actually messed up the uh, heart super there, and I think she might have been punishable, but uh, was still able to grasp some type of kill on heart. You're going to be forced in a 1v1 situation. S does have low for resonance available, so if she gets opened up here, there is a uh, another opportunity at light region. Maybe, potentially a 3-touch game for Ami, honestly. Oh, they got so lucky with that not connecting against them. But, oh yeah, okay, good pickup. Going to be getting a nice little 3k and forcing him to the corner. Maybe forcing out a push block here. <laughs> yeah, baiting the ants here with the EX projectile too. Fantastic stuff to Sony Kun, putting themselves 2 0 on the board. Yeah, that was clean. I'm not going to lie. Just uh, air stalling, uh, throwing out those EX projectiles. And yeah, Sony Kun will be up 2 0. I, I will say, like, I think that, uh, I think that Ami's early game approach is like admirable. Like, it is like one way to play if you want to like commit to that long game. I think once you've established enough of a lead and you have enough control of the macro that is where you need to be a little bit conscientious in terms of like your assist calls right i've seen Amy get a lot of tr in a lot of trouble for just um wanting to be so uh insistent on calling assist in order to control the screen rather than like slowing things down and just seeing what they're put at the up situation and being able to threaten first at the end of the day so um that may be one thing that's worth paying attention to uh but yeah, the start of this game is going a little bit differently as Sonic Kun is able to establish the pace um, a little bit more earlier. Yeah, gonna be setting up for the resonance stacks here. Not gonna be getting too many for it, gonna be swapping into the Rachel here, just really trying to put in as much pressure as they can on both these characters. Doing a good job of it too, gonna be carrying this S all the way to the corner and hitting them with a decent combo, gonna be blocking the overhead here. I, I do like the mining that they're playing with the uh, situation there. Not going to be getting a full confirm off of that uh, assist hit. No mix, just just block string. D this is going to take forever. Nice blocks. Maybe playing a little more patiently here. Yeah, I think at this point you just have to wait for your opportunity. Yeah, I mean, it seems like that's exactly what Sonic is doing. Does find a prime opportunity to push block. Has heart on deck. I, Ami knew that uh, Sonic was going to want to have back home, and so I really like the call of, I think that was the um, the 1B version of the fans, if I'm not mistaken. Wh whichever one just, just kind of goes right above her head. And she's above. But Sonic does escape out of that corner. Uh, I, oof. Yeah, you can see that Ami having life lead, trying to extend it as much as possible. Commits to a 5 feet that does get punished by the full screen super. Needs to be careful here. <laughs> Yikes. Heart, I know. Oh, that was probably not back. I'm gonna be getting the side swap here? Yeah, I'm gonna go all the way to the corner. I think it'd be worth it to extend here. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Oh, wait, no? I guess they wanted to swap to the S here. That, I guess that makes sense, sure. But uh, get, letting Yukiko in level 7 fire stay in resonance would also be kind of a threat but ultimately worked out in their favor we're going to be getting the loops in the corner here and maybe a nice hit oh, oh, oh. That, was hella weird. <laughs> that was the walk of shame they, they were not blocking the right way oh yeah persona displacement that's going to be a dead character it's going to be going out for the full combo here making it simple with the easier pickup that's going to be a 3-0 on sony Kun's part ami getting knocked down to the losers finals Broken ankles and broken personas leading to broken dreams here for Ami, but um, you know, it was a valiant effort. Uh, like, if they are able to get the run back against Sonic Kun, I just think the main thing that'll be uh, kind of called into question is in terms of like how Ami will close out games because there was two of those games where Ami actually had like a big life lead and it just came down to like one decision that they made within their um, sequencing of pressure while having that life lead that led to them taking a large amount of damage, right? Because think about it like, if you're playing slow and you're just kind of whittling away on uh, people's life bars, but you're not threatening anything that's too heavy mix, but you have them like within defense for like a solid like 60 seconds. Um, so long as they're not like doing any crazy reversal supers or spamming push block, they're gonna have a lot of resources when they finally do find the gap. And it's up to you with the zoner uh, mindset to make sure that those resources aren't being <laughs> kind of dished upon you and you don't have a, a means of escape in terms of burst of anything, so. Um, 
But yeah, I mean, it was, it was, it's a hard place not to implement. It's something that I try to implement myself, and I'm not perfect at. Like, I, I always kind of leave those gaps. It's like, dang, you know, I thought I had my whole life ahead of me, and here I am taking a ragged boot to the face for 10k. This is so sad. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a good way of putting it. People give zoners a lot of shit for, you know, not being very fun to fight against, not being a, a kind of playstyle that is able to be utilized in a lot of different ways that make them engaging. There are very few situations where that happens, but as the zoner player yourself, there's a lot of things that you need to consider all at once, and I think the set between Sony and Emmy uh, shows that in spades. Sony was rotating their options on defense quite a bit, using uh, back homing, using assist, and assist plus DP, all of that to the above. But we're going to be seeing a lot more, or I guess less of assists as they both DP round start for this next match. You're going to be going into the set between Mustache, Villain, and Serene, both big body players. Yeah, they both have really uh, intriguing teams where they have big bodies plus a non-traditional partner. <laughs> like Tegra with Teddy and Waldstein with Rachel. Uh, it seems like they, they share brain cells even, both of them going for our second key, which was hilarious and unscripted, I promise. But um, I feel like this match has been really hard to commentate. Uh, it's gonna be a lot of chaos happening on the stream at once, uh, and really, I feel like it'll be momentum heavy in terms of who's able to implement the game plan first, because both of your game plans that approach the game are extremely unique. Yeah, momentum heavy, well, true, is also also very indic indicative of how they're able to actually route their combos. I mean, Serene has been dropping a lot of them, call them Podge. I know they're not the bigger player, but man. They are they are getting away with murders here. Going to be over to the Teddy here, using a almost fully burst safe route on their part. Ooh, rare instance of air to airing Rachel and actually being successful. Big body burst actually coming in clutch there, hitting both sides so that they didn't have to worry about the swap. Good stuff to uh, Serene for recognizing that. Plus frames. Ooh. Yeah, I like that challenge. It's gonna be able to get the uh, wall slam super just like that. Recognized, hey, I'm a grappler too. I know that you want a reversal here. Tigger's reversal action is quite good. Bates that out. Uh, does this is this is not a punish. Um, that I see this is the hitting after the hit's done more off. But uh, a game's a game, Plankton. You know, a serene smile gonna be able to go up game one. <laughs> Bro was down backing for his life. He, he trusted Serene to do that combo. That's so unfortunate. <laughs> uh, but regardless, I'm just gonna have to brush that off. It, I think this is probably the one team to rival Mustache Villains team of just batshit insane things happening at all times. While it's not as flashy on Serene's team, it is definitely able to contest a, a composition like this one. And. Man, I think that is going to be the indicating factor on how this match goes. Because if Teddy's not able to get their game plan started and rotating the options that they want, then it's kind of hard to go through there. I, that was actually an interesting interaction between the 4P there, but it worked out in the favor, I guess. Tiny, look, how this tiny are so the is, truly. Oh, they yeah. wanted that air unblockable reset there. Buffett's villain not teching in a way that would have allowed for that. Was I flop combo with Tager in 20? What the hell am I watching, bro? Oh, yeah, what? the unblockable. Was that an unblockable? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, they, they posted about that before. It is def it is absolutely unblockable. It's not as airtight as you might think. There are definitely a couple things you can do about it, but it is a really fucked situation. It almost as fucked as bursting into the George here, but you, you kind of feel like you have to do that. Almost like you feel like... Pressing that command grab, you know you want to, you know you need to, and getting out of the situation got for you. I'm kind of surprised the claws did not deal with- Oh my what? god, dude. <laughs> that was insane, bro. What's with this guy? This mustache villain figure. Hello? Oh. Okay. <laughs> I, I mean, it worked, I guess. That is- Definitely an interesting way of going about that. Trying to 5C over the armor and getting into a command grab situation, leaving the Rachel on their own. Oh, yeah, there it is. Dead? Yeah, no, that's definitely dead. Gotta be. Yeah, Serene risking it all. Um, unfortunately, within one of the most powerful game states in a match, that level of her residence, Rachel, not having an opportunity to really implement anything. And, um, I, and the question I was going to pose until that happened was, um, 
what does mustache villain do because I, I was imagining that we were going to get uh rachel's air super or george's or some type of memes on the screen but uh since serene uh committed to that dp it was baited we didn't even really get a chance to answer that question but if it does come around again like rachel doing rachel things as solo rachel level 4 resonance I, I will be interested to see how mustache villain approaches that because I, I would be looking for answers and i don't know if there would be anything to be found if i was piloting the team but mustache villain is a different piece of it. yeah yeah that's a good way of thinking about it it is without a doubt a little more interesting than that almost as interesting as getting that confirmed there goods I wanted to say good stuff. Uh, I like the run under from MV to be able to get out of the corner in that situation. Gonna be spending a little more of a resource, but uh, just really walking down this Teddy and the fuzzy push block going in their favor. The 40 frame cross up also letting them out of the situation. The Rachel Wind actually forcing the Teddy Bear to not go as far as it usually would. The Clash on the 4A and 2B gonna be setting out some more Lobelli as this Tager is not gonna be feel very comfortable here. I find it really funny when Serene moves across the screen because I think sometimes he doesn't even know where he is and he really embodies a mentality of if I don't know how can they and and it looks like it might actually work out in his favor here. Yeah, he Not much catapult. Oh, okay. Not, I like that. They're trying to keep it as unversatile as possible. Uh, ended up working out with the drink tax. Uh, I think Rachel was able to get that drink level for residents. And here it is. This was my question to begin with. How does Mustache Villain deal with this? The I think the point is they don't. Yeah. She sets up Lobelia's, you, you deal with George, you, you gotta push block away, spend your resources. Yeah. Super? Yeah, I'd probably just do it again. Really? Okay, I guess they yeah. wanted to hard bait, they knew that the character was dead, fair enough. Not gonna be able to kill, I guess they recognize that they had no Rachel uh, a meter left. Gonna be able to chip out with a lot of these Lobelias here, just slowly but surely making the situation a little better yeah honestly mustache villain has weathered the storm well enough is what i would say i was gonna say they maintained their 2v1 for quite some time but just like that able to get poked out serene able to pick up the pieces with the solo rachel i i like how fucking fumble proof that combo was <laughs> they they fucked up three times in the span of two seconds by not jumping up to hit them on the Lobelia, and they still killed. Th th this, th whoever tells you that Rachel is hard, it's just lying to you. Th this character plays themselves, I swear to god. Okay, okay. okay. <clears throat> you know, you, maybe it's not proper to say that Rachel is, uh hard or complex you could say that rachel has layers okay and uh that rachel has a high skill ceiling all right that those are the, those are the proper terms yeah just to, just to avoid the <laughs> fucking po 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 politi chat. politically correct rachel discourse <laughs> yeah you're gonna be getting a lot of that and i honestly wasn't sure what situation wald was gonna be teching there bro was mashing though damn Gonna be getting the swap into the Rachel here and getting a relatively long combo. Gonna be getting the... I don't even know, they're just doing stuff right now. Gonna be going into the walls here and baiting the ants here and getting the super on the burst. Just controlling the pace of the match so well here. Alright, Rebellia, Sad, Wald, what more could you want to summon here? Oh my god, how about... A uh, gigantic Tager Buster surprise call on the active switcher for Mustache Villain. That may have been exactly what they needed to bring some life back to this matchup. However, cross combo gonna allow for the Tager to be vulnerable. Can't snowball as much as I think they would like from that power play. Oh, the, the meat shield coming in clutch for that hit there. Nice confirm too. I guess, I don't know if they're intentionally dropping or not, but like... Oh uh, yeah, tried to go for the... <laughs> it just did it again. The DPing, man, that, who said DP assist is dead? We're playing oh. all three right now. He oh, killed yeah, Walt, though! He killed Walt! What is the play Just here? It, keeping it a little simple, doesn't want to have to deal with the Tempest W. He's trying to set something up. Uh, yeah, plus on block super. Grah! Man. Just push blocking into George. I hope Mustache Villain was playing with sound. I don't have sound on at the moment. My speaker died. So I didn't even know George was on the screen. <laughs> Serene smile.
I, was that, I think that was these or semis, right? Yeah, that was semis. So, MV going out at fourth place and gonna be able to cement themselves once again within the community, being their own thing, doing their thing. And we always love to see it. And just like we love to see this top three gonna be going on within the next few matches here. I think... You know what, let me not even try and like say anything actually cementable about this. There is... There's too much shit going on with these characters sometimes. It's hard to say. But... I mean, I think there's a you know player matchup. Like, I, 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 uh, much similarly to what we're uh, kind of identifying with the Amethyst and uh, Sprite Cranberry matchup, like, Serene definitely has that type of energy and has that type of style and has the type of mindset of just, like, um, pushing forward, overwhelming you, using Walda as a meat shield. It's a very um, carefree and chaotic type of uh, play style that they implement. And so I think constantly forcing those interactions on uh, Ami is going to kind of push their um, mental limits. Uh, however, on paper, like, I know that uh, Ami is fully capable of being able to play around that, but I just think their overall endurance and um, stability is going to be tested here if they want to uh, come out on top. A fair assessment in every sense of the word, but as fair as any assessment can be, I can only be as objective, let's say, about <laughs> not cooperating. Man, we were doing so well for a while. It, we didn't have to worry about it for a good minute, but we're back to we're back to standard. PS4 doing its thing. Oh man, it oh, it is yeah. yeah, it's truly tragic that we're like this, but hopefully we'll be able to just join back into the room and restart from there. Maybe not go into the lobby and do their thing. I guess they might actually be trying to do that, just to make sure that they connect properly. It's such a shame that we can't, like, back out of a match if we're in it inside the lobby. I feel like that would save a lot of time, but it is what it is. And it just gives us more time to think about how this match is going to play. I Is this a rematch? I don't think so, right? No, I don't believe so. I believe they're on opposite ends of the bracket, so... Yeah, yeah, okay. They weren't uh, doing anything there. Uh, both of them were dropped losers by Sonic though, so they are both looking for that run back. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that is that is a common force that they can both share with one another. Kicking each other's asses just to get a chance to do the same to the dreaded heart player sitting in Grands right now. And now, how they're going to go about doing that is up in to debate. They... I feel like it's going to be determined by who's able to set the pace of the match faster. Neither of them have particularly crazy Oki that either of them have to consider while playing the match, I suppose, but I don't think zoner players like blocking. So both of them are going to be a little antsy in how they go about approaching either side. I am not sure how they would feel about it otherwise, but... Hmm. How do you think the character interactions would play into this one? Because I'm drawing a blank, actually. Uh, between, like, Hilda Yukiko uh, versus Wald Rachel? Just in general, yeah. Like, uh, the point characters as a whole, because Hilda versus Rachel is a bit of a weird matchup. Hilda does have the tools to stifle Rachel at any range, but once she is set up, it does feel as if Hilda can't really move the same way she would want to. Because slow buttons slow basically everything. Yeah, it, does Hilda really 2B just... hit Walt standing? I don't think so, no. Okay, okay. Because I mean, like, my, my, my ideology of, like, the approach here is that um, full screen is fine. However, I think what you actually want to do in this matchup with Hilda is kind of keep it more mid-screen focused and threaten uh, things like 5A with uh, Yukiko 5P and things of that sort. And then if you get a read on a uh, wall trying to take this guy's, like, 2B and uh, stuff. And I say that as a means of trying to... Uh, potentially call out a Rachel 4P call or Rachel trying to set up anything. You know, since uh, 
Hilda has that multi-hitting 5A, you kind of increase the likelihood of being able to stuff her out and thus forcing Serene to potentially want to push block. And then when you get into the full screen tendencies, you uh, can threaten 5B and try to get work your way back into that range or zone if you want to. But I, I think you don't want to initially take to the full screen mind game. You want to be forced there as a means of push block or as a means of a DP or anything before you play that uh, play that game. That's just my ideology of how I would approach it if I was playing Hilda Batista. I don't know if that's right. I don't know if that's what Ami would do, but that that is that is my approach as an intermediate BB type player. It's crazy that you put yourself as an intermediate, but retired not my as a retired BB type it. player. Let's sit, let's yeah. say that. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. I don't I don't think you're going to be joining brackets anytime soon, but we appreciate your support regardless. Just like we're going to be appreciating the support of the backup characters in both of these matches here, because while the dichotomy between both the point characters is very interesting, I think the way Yukiko is going to help in uh, uh, Hilda interact with Rachel is going to be a lot more impactful than the way that Wald would interact, because Wald requires a very specific uh, proximity to the enemy, which is not where Rachel probably wants to be. Both of them want to be as far away from their opponents as possible, but... I suppose if we're putting Wald on point here, then it's more of a matter of setting up the Lobelias and forcing the hill to block, which also makes sense, yeah. Crossfire DP. Okay, no, not quite. <laughs> You know, I, I saw the vision. I, I think that would have made sense, yeah. But I think this is exactly what we were considering here. Just going to be slowly but surely looping the situations that give them as much advantage as possible. While there really isn't that much mix, they, they did just get opened up by high, but like, there really isn't that much to go off of. They, they were just building a lot of levels on the uh, Yuki go here. Forcing, force the block in the situation and getting a nice pickup too. Going to be able to carry directly there. Not gonna push blocking until now. Gonna be pushing out, getting the level 4, slowly but surely building up on this Yukiko here. We're gonna be pressing out and making this wall block as long as possible, and probably going for Oki until they got bursted, and put into the corner. Oh, I, yeah, you still lose that, yeah. Bro, like, I'm glad we weren't on PC tag. Somebody's frame rate would've got, somebody's graphic chart would've gotten melted from that interaction. <laughs> the, the the Nokia laptop they bought in 2014 just deleting itself out of existence with that one. Just like the character on screen known as Waldstein also got deleted, getting crossed up for their troubles, and Ami taking the next game, finally able to show themselves here. Absolutely, absolutely. And honestly, I don't think I was too far off the mark with the assessment of how the uh, matchup could be approached there from Ami, right? We did see um, there's some full screen tendencies there coming into play, but I think um, there were a lot of JDs that you know were really able to bully Wald. And as you said, there wasn't really any heavy mix-up situation going on with the hold on point. But it was pressure and it was lockdown. And most importantly, it was denying racial assist calls. So like, even if like you're able to do that, um, once you kill the wall, the Rachel will come in re weaker. There is no level 4 resonance to worry about, so... Um, I like uh, Emmy's approach here. Yeah, no, uh, being able to deny the assist is probably one of the biggest things about playing uh, just a tag game in general. But especially with a team like this that has such a big trump card in the back, it is absolutely important to do so. Wow, that... Command Grab had like no recovery. Did you see how they canceled straight from Command Grab into JC? I don't know if that was like a weird interaction situation, but that definitely seemed a little odd. Almost as odd as gonna be getting this confirmed. Yeah, just, just throwing shit out. They. <laughs> okay, okay. Trying to set up some uh, situation here. Now, the walled 6 be getting pushed away due to the screen. Definitely saving certain a little bit of uh, face here. They're going to be crossing into the Yuki Hill here, taking the Oki, and just trying to get something started, honestly. Okay, yeah, find the cross up. Ami attempting to bring this back. Five stacks available, four bars. And this is a, you know, high prize character to kill if you can. I think uh, Serene recognized that and was like, no. I don't care if this burst is blocked, I don't care what happens, I'm getting walled in no matter what. I can't allow for it to die here. 
Yeah, and I think that that situation right there is exactly why. While they weren't able to, to stabilize the kill, they were able to put Yukiko into the situation where she's forced to call this. Oh wow, what a really good fan placement, just forcing the, the uh, Tempest Dahlia to go out from here. Oh yeah, missed the punish here. She is a little safer in Resonance, if I remember correctly. I know she's not plus unless it's the air version, but she was able to... It's a little harder to punish, I believe. But Yukiko going to be able to go into this next round, taking themselves two on the board. <clears throat> yeah, Emmy just having a... Some very powerful gameplay uh, that is going on here at the moment. Like I'm uh, extremely uh, impressed by the uh, phenomenal display that they're able to uh, bring to the table here. I had the mistake of I hear Chief snickering in the background. It's like I only imagine there's shenanigans going on in Twitch chat, but <laughs> nothing, nothing could prepare me. It. No, nothing could prepare me for what I read. So that was y'all. Y'all gotta relax. Wait, I want to screenshot this. <laughs> excuse, excuse me. I, I need to screenshot this. What is happening? You know, sometimes I lament being a commentator on nights like this because people just say shit like this, and it, it's it's just distracting at that point. I'm so glad the players can't see the Twitch chat because holy shit. But. Almost as bad as that is a situation that Emmy might have been in if you weren't able to swap into the, the Hilda here. Not able to call uh, Yukiko for quite a bit of time, but they are able to utilize the situation that they're in to get as much damage as possible, maybe? Yeah, you know, heal the damage. Not exactly going to be doing anything crazy. Probably just going to be healing a little bit. No, just going to be setting up for the st uh, stack levels here. Dead carriage? Oh, just one it. Big body. Yeah, there it is. Build a character and go into the Rachel. This is level 4 resonance, you know, the, the typical almost tried to pick up off of that in, uh, clash location. Just gonna be trying to force this Rachel to do as many things as she wants. Set things up on the screen and she knows that she can't really do Italia until now. Ah, oh, that's gonna be that strategy. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, Hilda coming out with the level 4 resonance now. Oh wow, air DP, not wanting to block that. I was gonna say, luckily for Amy. Doesn't have to deal with uh, Rachel having any sort of bar or resonance uh, at the moment. Gonna be able to slow things down to their own pace. Uh, just a matter of how they're gonna do so. You can see Serene is heavy on the aggression. Does end up running into one of those uh, pesky Hilda 5 A's. And Amy is able to uh, do it for him. Gonna be able to get the 3 0 victory. Solid stuff. Yeah, I think, it, a, I think a, a big matter of this uh, victory was locking down the wall. Like, the wall is, whether Serene wants to admit it or not, a pretty crucial part of the game plan at play here because ha having the uh, presence of walled buttons and lockdown and overall, like, meat shield type of play style is what they need in order to uh, enable to the Rachel Wincon. And they just really couldn't get anything started within the 2v2. Yeah, uh, we were talking a little before about how Serene has grown as a player and has shown that they are less willing to just kill the character off. I think they've shown a little less of that with that set there. They they definitely killed off Wald a couple times or, or didn't value them as much as they really realistically should have. And like you said, they're a lot more of a core of the team than they most likely were thinking in the moment. So losing the character Despite the comeback factor that Rachel does bring to the table, it's really hard for her to do anything with those 15 seconds of gold. Mm -hmm. But regardless of that, going out with a bang, Serene not doing so without showing their name. Fantastic stuff to Serene and good stuff for showing so far. Thanks for coming out and placing third. We are going to be moving on to our grand finals. However, we also have one more important thing to do, Atkins. Do you think you know what that is? Uh, we need to tell the lovely viewers at home about the Matrino. Pew, 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 pew. Vine boom, vine boom. Exclamation point Matrino in the chat if you want to check it out. Uh, the pot is currently sitting at $75.01. Uh, Y'all should know about some of the other contributions that were made earlier, but there was a recent one. Uh, Ooh, wait, why did you, did, did you just set me up? I didn't, I didn't actually know this had happened. 
There, there was a recent contribution uh, from Connor with the message slapping Atkins with the disrespect with a donation of twenty five dollars at one cent. Um, I don't. Uh, I, I I take that personally. I, I really don't. I'm, I feel like I've been set up here. Um, if you would like to uh, <laughs> donate to the pot and have your message read on stream, uh, feel free to do so. I do highly um, encourage you to not insult me. Um, that, that would be. That would be very kind of you, but um, yeah, what, what would be even kinder is uh, providing these players with money as a reward for playing BB Tag in the year 2024. Uh, contribute if you'd like. Just uh, be nice to me, please. Don't be like Connor. <laughs> you know, I, I saw that Connor donated, but I did not see the message on the bottom. <laughs> I, I was none the wiser. You set me up. I don't know how to fool about that. I, I, thought, I thought we were homies. Look, I'm look, so look, sorry. if he, if, if, if Mito didn't do it, I was going to say, Atkins, I want you specifically to do it. <laughs> Man. <laughs> you you I, think I, you have friends until you realize they're enemies. That's I didn't do it with Malice. Dude, Mr. Master Chumfi over here did. He, his ass was like, <laughs> he was out for blood. But as much blood has been spilt already, I think we're going to be seeing a bloodbath with this next set here. The run back of Ami versus Sony Kun. Okay, so we have to think about how the matchup went last time, right? It was a very clean 3 0 for Sony. And the main reason for that is because once they were able to get that knockdown, they didn't really let go of it. And they were able to rotate their options very well in neutral. So I think Ami has to either be one step ahead of them when it comes to that. Think, maybe thinking about their uh, resources and playing a little more cognizantly of that. Looking at their bar, looking at their assist gauge, all of the, the above. Or they just play as safe as much as possible and then they essentially throw rock for like five things in a row until they get the outcome they want. Either way it could work and I think rotating or uh, balancing between both of those mindsets could be a good idea. But ultimately, they do have to change something here and now. And I think that's going to be the big thing on how this set is going to be determined because they have a lot of work to do. The potential 10 game set and they they have to make it work. Yeah, I mean, if uh, the winner's finals is anything to go by, uh, Ami is definitely able to hang with Sonic Kun within a neutral game. In fact, they typically, more often than not, were coming out on top within a neutral game. It was just a one critical error in their approach once they had that life lead that allowed for Sonic Kun to kind of turn things back into their favor. And then, of course, you know, if uh, Heart is kind of getting started, getting things going, and you're being uh, subject to Sonic Kun's offense, it's uh, not an ideal situation, so Sonic Kun was able to seal the deal. So, um, yeah, it will be a matter of uh, kind of choosing... I yeah? I, sorry, I just want to interject with a brief uh, thing here. Uh, we got a $35.01 contribution Get from uh, Rodney Pelode. Thank you very much. Uh, bracket's at $110. <laughs> or the man, bot. That's incredible. I that was the Rodney one time. Tonight. <laughs> oh, um. Hey, are you good? <laughs> <laughs> no. Sony Kun. On the screen. Yes. D commentating why is he playing Yang Akatsuki what what are these fucking color choices too what is this shit I uh I don't know what's happening on either side honestly <laughs> like if you're gonna pick a separate team then at least color coordinate it like the, the green and blue just don't match here this doesn't I mean good. hold on hold on hold on hold on I'm gonna come to the defense of not color coordinating your characters it can be fine the Mitsu Batista palette I've played for like, I don't know, what year is it, bro? For five years? is not color coded. It's brown coat Mitsu and purple Batista. But, you know, they don't have to match perfectly. In fact, I think it kind of be corny if it works to match. <laughs> That's insane. Actually bonkers. Almost as bonkers as killing that Batista. Gonna be trying to go for the high-low, but press the wrong button to do so. You can <laughs> really tell about the unfamiliarity of the character here. Just trying to play them in a fundamental way, but you can't really do that with a character like Yang, especially against uh, Rachel. Yeah, just... <laughs> he really wanted to parry that. I feel so bad. He, he got put into the bad situation. He got caught low. And... Not dead, but we're gonna be spending a lot of the resonance time to set this up here. And I'm gonna, I feel like I'm gonna keep it a buck. I don't know if it was worth going for that extended of a route. Wouldn't it have been better to end early and just try to offer chips? 
No, 2000%. I wholeheartedly agree. And especially against Akatsuki, because that kind of Oki okay literally doesn't matter. He doesn't care. He, he has a reflector. You can't stop him from doing that if the projectiles need him. Bro woke up JA. Jesus Christ. Dead? Yeah. No, just went straight into super. <laughs> Sony Kun actually taking a game with this team. Okay. Jesus Christ. Why did that work? He's he swapped me to the Yukiko immediately, I feel it. I don't know. I don't know. I, I feel like it won't be a full swap. I think it's gonna be Hilda Rachel and then it'll be Hilda Yukiko. That's my read. That's my read. Probably. As per yeah. requested, by the way, just wanna intercheck. As per requested, shout outs to Small Doll Twink for sending in thirty-five dollars oh and two God. cents. <laughs> to the pot. We're at $145 and four cents for this match arena. Jesus Christ. <laughs> and Diddly is the being of all time. It is a crazy person. Jesus Christ. I it's been a really long time since Matrino has had or Match Reno has had a WNF. Since WNF has had a Match Reno. Um yeah, I, for, I forgot about the chaos that ensues if I decide to donate to one. It's it's inevitable. It doesn't matter how much I donate. It doesn't matter when it happens. If if I decide to uh, simply contribute money to my, my favorite scene uh, and my favorite online tournament series, it just it goes off the rails ever so quickly. I don't know how y'all meant to see this every single time, but uh, thanks to the small doll twink. Feel free to clip that and do whatever you want with it. <laughs> Putting that in the next commentator reel. <laughs> All right, yeah, gonna, just gonna be yeah, carrying the, the Windows Movie Maker uh, with the uh, what's what's the name of that one song playing in the background on every YouTube video tutorial? <laughs> Have that in the lead in. It's like first clip BB tag. Thanks, a small doll tweet. <laughs> it just goes into this random. I I actually need that to happen. That may actually be my commentary reel. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like that. <laughs> that's. <laughs> it, it has to have the fucking the, the 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 notebook open and like you typing with the music blaring loud as fuck. Like it, it, it'd be so. Bro, I just realized I said Windows Movie Maker. There has to be at least half the chat that doesn't even know what the hell that is. Do you know what that are you talking There's about no Sony Vegas? <laughs> <laughs> oh God, I'm thirty. Damn. We, we had a whole ass conversation about this last time. Just like we were about to have a conversation about why the fuck did that 4B hit like that? That was super unfortunate. Bro made the right decision with that DP and just got crushed for it. Why are we about. Why are we on set point? Uh, I don't know. Uh, Sonic is really winning this with a. Uh, bro. Dude, I think this is an RNGG call out. If Sonic Hood wins this tournament with Yang Akatsuki, I need RNGG to win a PC Tag WNF. Like, RNGG, you can't allow for this to happen. I, I think this is a, a, a RNGG diss track, actually. This whole entire set. Not a big fan of the government. <laughs> Get ready! The Neo? What the fuck? Hello? Makikon Kissick in chat? I don't know. Yeah, I, I told you, Yukiko Hilda would not come out. I, I didn't. I, I didn't see that happening. I, I. Why were you right? I just know these things. You, you, bro, bro, past the twenties and just has omniscience now. And is that like? Oh, oh shit. Okay. You know what? No, forget it. Forget it. Forget all of it. What is going on? Nice air to air. Actually, that was really good. Oh, did we get the confirm that they wanted? Oh, if, if, if Yang still got a pickup off that, I would have been like, Ooh. no combo. The dead? Yeah. The hardest working mute on the planet with the raging demon. Aries? <laughs> Bro's putting in work with these berries. <laughs> I, I think we've hit that point of the night where I'm starting to feel delirious about shit, even though we haven't actually done that much. Okay, okay, there it is. Y using the, uh... This is so sad. <laughs> this... I... I hope the tournament isn't lost this way. 
Oh my uh, god, it's going, it's going dead. off the world. It's going off the world. Resist after the fact. Yukiko will have quite a bit of life. Level four. What? Oh, the 5 T frame kill? Yo, look at this setup. <laughs> oh, it was too perfect. Oh yeah, I got caught low. Gonna be able to set up the resonance relatively safely. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, there's there's no uh, astral on board here. Neither of them could really get that in time. And we are slowly but chi surely chipping away at the Sakatsuki. Are you but... slowly but shit? <laughs> no, no, absolutely not. <laughs> Chill. <laughs> All right. Oh, the 5C, the Detective Pro? Let's go. We got the health lead. Just, just gotta uh, hold out. You gotta be SpongeBob SquarePants if you tell him Sonic is gonna take this 3 0 with this little Akatsuki comeback, <laughs> given the circumstances that we saw 30 seconds ago. Ain't no way. What the hell is happening? He's loose. Oh, I, okay. I'm not gonna okay. lie. I was afraid of a clash. I was Me afraid too. of. <laughs> Me too. I, I did not say a word because I was so scared some bullshit was gonna happen. Okay, so the question is, does he stick with it? Bro, yeah, you're this far, you're the winner's side. At this point, you gotta try to get the debut up win with Yank Kotsky for the culture. Like, there ain't no way Sonic is switching. Yeah, and Ami is linked into this team, so it's, it's kind of fucked up if you think about it. And I actually don't know if you could swap on a... Uh, a like tournament reset. I think you can, you but can. okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Uh, so technically not the worst position to be in, but oh yeah, punish that. Three seconds of recovery, by the way. One hundred and eighty seconds. Yo, reset. Bro was trying things. Oh, caught low. Side swap. High low mix up. <laughs> in question. Cross raid. She burns. She does indeed burn, just like she's burning that health to get out of fucking the, the scene right now. Akatsuki basically playing solo for a bit. Oh shit, okay. We're, we're listening to I've- Oh, yo, the air Tatsu? Hello? Gonna be able to end the combo here, get a very simple knockdown- Oh, crossing over the boost! Um, Go with the- I actually don't know about this routing. You don't- I, I don't know if the C- the C talks to a little bit over for it. If it was just B talks to and it was this exact same route, you kill Neo here, but it is what it is. Again, this is literally just character unfamiliarity going on here. Bro did the thing that was comfortable for him, and it did not work out. But it's fine, because they still have the health lead for now, and neither of these characters do a lot of damage, but... Well, okay, I should take that back. Yukiko can do damage, but... And, oh my god, why are we playing Uni? Oh, dude, there's no tattoos. way I just saw a cop. Dude, I'm about to turn off this PlayStation, bro. I, I'm running out of words, I'm running out of words. Akatsuki beat Tatsu, hit with a backwards hitbox on the second hit twice. Twice in like the exact same situation, I might add. Oh, okay, got the whip punish, gonna be able to burst out. This character has no health. Yeah, no, you have to be careful here. At this point, just run at Burning Gold, like... No, that was the biggest punish of your life! <laughs> Whip punish, let's go! <laughs> do you think sony Kun has a stream at them? Do you think you heard that? Do they? Uh, there's no- there's no way! <laughs> Wait a minute! Oh my god. What is happening? Oh, fuck. <laughs> If that lasted like a second longer, it was over. There's so much jumping going on. It's over. It's over. It's over. There was. It's over. There was no. There was no other way. The, the world had to be fixed. I'm afraid. This is. This is the. What, this why was did I check? Go ahead. Quite the grand finals. I'm not gonna lie. I hate you, Sonic. I hate you so much. Um. I, I, I like how I look to the chat 